Welcome to Just a Few More Minutes podcast where three veterans of the animation and video game industry talk about animation and video games and whatever other jazz we feel like talking about that particular week. I am Jeff Gabor. I'm a lead animator at Blue Sky Studios and sitting across from me is... Michael Berdini. I animate stuff. And way up in Rhode <laughs> Island, Boston area is... Pete Paquette, I animate too. And once again, we have a special guest. No longer do we have BJ Crawford or Matt Simmons. We have the illustrious... Jamie Gagger. Oh. Yay. From Colorado. So we asked Jamie to to jump on the podcast this week because he is quite the fan of Xbox and we felt like he should explain himself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, idiot. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, as always, let's... Just jump straight into the animation tip of the week, and then we can get to talking to Jamie and about his his fandom. His, his obsession. My love. All right, animation tip of the week. You know what? This deserves a little... Hold on. I want, I want to play some music. Uh, oh. There we go. Oh, yeah. Is it too loud? Everyone gets mad at us with the audio. Is it really too loud? It was too loud last week? I don't know. I don't Shut listen up. to the show. <laughs> now, last week, last week's audio wasn't bad. Like the 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 music, anyway. Yeah, it was right. fine. All right, I'll turn it down just to make sure. All right, so one thing that I actually have a problem with, and I think a lot of people have an issue with, is when we get cast super complicated physical shocks shots, not shocks. Shocks are bad too. <laughs> yeah, shocks are really bad. Shocking. <laughs> so shots. So I, I find the best way to do that and not to get overly like con- like worried about the actual form of the character because in 3D, the rigs can be definitely heavy, right? And when you have a super complicated physical shot, you have to put a ton of poses, like a pose every other frame or sometimes every frame just to get the actual animation to read. So the tip is, and maybe some people already did this and this is somewhat obvious. Here we go. But take it back to a bouncing ball. I do this all the time with physical shots is make a ball that roughly the size of your character or maybe just like the hip area take that bouncing ball and animate that it's 24 frames per second you isolate that and you animate it all the way through you get to play with timing you get to experiment a lot with um, taking out frames and it's super fast feedback a lot of times you don't even need to play blast because you can just simply do it in shot. So, like, I'm working on a super complicated, like, dancing shot right now, and it's all time to music. And having a little bouncing ball, you get to feel the rhythm of the music, you get to feel the rhythm uh, of the shot, you get to know when to do slow moves, fast moves, and you get to experiment super, super fast. And then, as an added bonus, you can take that into maybe, like, a 2D animated program and draw over the top of your ball for your main hero poses, and you get to be lightning fast. Holy shit! Yeah, that's just for, <laughs> that's for extra... <laughs> frosting extra frost but i've been doing the extra juice yeah i've been doing the bouncing ball thing forever and it works really well actually i was just talking to our friend tab who we work with he just set up well someone else set it up for him but a hotkey that basically creates a sphere and then brings it straight in front of the camera because he apparently works with spheres all the time to do exactly that Hmm. and this is just like a nice workflow that gets everything set up for him to start doing that immediately that's pretty cool nice uh, yeah, one thing to do, like, when you do that is to make sure you're, you, you, the same thing, our first, our very, very first animation tip was to orient the, the like, the god node to the camera. Mm. It's very good to do that with your spheres, too, so I wonder if that script does that, because basically you... It does. Yeah, see, then you, it's gold. I, I gotta ask Tab about that, because I spend way too much time setting it up. Hmm. Yep. Shout out to Tab, otherwise known as Straight Up Poon. <laughs> that is that is him. that is his, his nickname <laughs> very weird all right so all right that's good right i i explained myself tonight we're drinking colorado whiskey not our sponsor but not too shabby you should tre- reach out and try and get them as a sponsor sometime that would actually be really cool and then we only drank them because i do like this whiskey this is good yeah Although BJ's bourbon that he brought was super smooth, like ridiculous, yeah. like dangerous smooth, like tastes like blackout uh, smooth. Uh, <laughs> well, I was surprised. Like we drank enough of it. I was like, man, it didn't even get me tipsy. And then I laid down and then the room was spinning. Yeah, that episode yeah. of BJ, I got the most drunk by far. I remember I was waiting for Pete to send me the audio so I could upload it onto YouTube. 
and he was taking forever or I maybe just forgot to check my email and I just lied on the floor and I felt like I was on a roller coaster and I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should have sent some bourbon your guys' way. <laughs> hey, man. Should've. Yeah, if you want to butter us up. <laughs> Simmons didn't bring it on his dick. Yeah, he just ate fucking your cookies. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we have him back. <laughs> uh. So, in other news, there's been news. <laughs> Video game news. news. Lots yes, of it. Yes, there has Actually, been a this, lot this of could it. literally take up the next two hours. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, jeez. Yeah, well, we'll try and get through it quickly. I mean, GDC was this past uh, week. And uh, those of you who don't know what GDC is, it's the Game Developers Conference. Yeah. So, it's, it's basically the people who make the games, for those who don't know get together and uh, once a year and share trade secrets. They also uh, host the IGF Awards and the Game Developers Choice Awards. Um, there's also a lot of uh, games that get shown off that are in production or in their, in their infancy, what have you. Um, this year... The the star of the of the uh, the star of the conference. Sorry, <laughs> lost my battery for a second. Show. The star of the uh, of the show was there was an awful lot of virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. VR. What? what? <laughs> Pete is telling us to go on our own. <laughs> He's having technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> Speaking of VR, uh, PlayStation VR went on sale for pre-order today, and I tried to get it, and it sold out immediately. Yeah, it sold out immediately in the United wow. Kingdom, right? And it, I guess it would be expected that it happened here, too. Technically, it was still available at Best Buy and GameStop, but I was like, no. I only shop at <laughs> Amazon, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Well, I'm going to leave all the VR talk to... to uh, Michael there. Okay. Because there, there was an awful lot of VR. Not to mention... Son of it. I'm not all that excited about VR, to be perfectly honest with uh, you guys. Whoa. You used all it? Right. Oh, stabbing the All heart. right. So let's just... Uh, why, why, we'll get back to the news. We might as well, since we're already off on this tangent. <laughs> I, I genuinely think most entertainment will switch. It should sh- switch. Maybe it won't. It's just like, yeah, beta should have beat VHS. But it should win out in, in terms of form of entertainment. You talk about VR? Yeah, VR in general. Like, because it's so, it goes so much further beyond video games. It goes way... I, like, I yeah. think this is how you're going to shop. This is how you're going to take in music. This is how you're going to travel and experience the world. This is how you're going to talk to your family. This is how you're going to do video conferencing. I'm quite excited about VR. Think about going to a kick-ass concert in VR. Wouldn't that be Yeah, neat? they already have, like, um, videos of concerts with, like, the 360 um, cameras. And um, and uh, I there was an article I just found today that um, there's a company called Jaunt, and they do, like, cinematic, like, VR, um, where you can – basically, you're taking trips to different places, and they just did one for um, Machu Picchu. And uh, – so That's it's so like, cool. I, you know, <clears throat> I would definitely love to go there and visit it for sure. But it's like, if you don't have the money, you can go visit places that you've never been to. Yeah, or, or just simply the stamina. If you have <laughs> the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah. you know, I, I did the whole cardboard thing with my, my phone, uh, with Google Cardboard. And and they had one for like Paris. And, you know, I'm looking around and all of a sudden... I look up and there's the, the Eiffel Tower, and just I'm just out of nowhere, like, it almost attacked you. <laughs> what? Like, Whoa! I, well, I, I had to turn it around to to see it, and it's, and that that's what's so cool because like I was like, wow, I I didn't realize you know how tall it was, and so yeah, and you could actually feel it. That's that's the thing. It, yeah. There's such a feel to the world. The I mean, the first time I tried VR, I'm sure I talked about this on a, other podcasts, but the fact that we, you're, you're on do- other podcasts. I know. Did I say that? You said on. on oh, I mean other episodes. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, doing the roller coaster thing and then have that giving you the butterflies. Yeah. Like 
if if your body can believe it so heartily that it believes you're falling, like that is that is the power of VR. See, I had I had a very lukewarm experience with VR. I tried the an early Oculus Rift yeah. uh, kit, and all it was was this stupid office from X Men or something. And I'm looking around it, I was not impressed one bit. Um, and then somebody got the, ca- the like, what was the first one? The Samsung like. One of my friends got the, like the Samsung right. the, visor thing. Oh, the gear. And, yeah, gear, and that thing just sucks. It, like <laughs> you shove your phone in the front of it, and there's like thumbprints and shit all over the screen, so you can't <laughs> see really what what you're looking at. I don't know. But Maybe it's still... just the experience I had that tarnished it. But I'm I I prefer my 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 imagery in 2D. I mean, so do I. I don't like seeing like movies in 3D and stuff, but this, if it's done well, is completely different. Like, yeah, I know the Google Cardboard stuff where you stick your phone in the thing is sort of lame, but they did some Star Wars ones with like the new yeah. Force Awakens. Those ones are awesome. They're fucking awesome. They're like tiny, tiny so little good. vignettes. They're like maybe 30 seconds long, but it's got such a sense of like space and awareness and stuff and like you can watch watch it multiple times and miss stuff that's happening behind you and everything it it was surprisingly cool even though i couldn't see most of it because the pixels were so small yeah i feel like i I came up with this apt analogy and i'm sure i stole it from somebody but i feel like because vr i agree with you pete shouldn't replace 2d like visuals but i feel like the difference is like what if you compare it to listening to music on uh, a stereo system like in your car or uh, just in your living room. Like that set can sound really, really good. But the difference of like putting on a really solid set of head, like earphones, like Bose earphones, the the immersive quality and the listening quality is completely different. I feel like that yeah. that is VR to me. It's like you can just wear this one th- small thing and you can hear every little thing and be really, really part of it. Freaking cool! It's a good way to. But let, 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 let me let me let me retort. Retort away. <laughs> retort. retort. You said a small thing. There is no such thing as a small VR headset right now. Those <laughs> things are tremendous. Yeah. That's right another now, thing that I'm not looking forward to is putting those stupid things on my head. <laughs> I mean, they they do kind of look, you know, ridiculous. But like, I've been waiting for VR since the 1991 where. And you know, the first one came out, and these things are like you literally have like an RC TV on your head. I mean, these yeah. things are massive. That was the one you but, didn't you mention? You were like in a helicopter or a plane or something. Yeah, I was in a I was in a biplane. Of course, the graphics were horrible, but like you know, I, I have this <laughs> massive <laughs> helmet on idea. my head, and then I have a you know a joystick, and then I'm flying around, and I have a gunner sitting in front of me, and then like. I look around and then like I can peek over the the side of my airplane and and so like I'm I'm banking chasing enemies while my gunner's trying to shoot them down and it was just it was mind blowing to me and I, it it's crazy that it's taken almost two and a half decades for it to come back again finally yeah and it's cool that they announced like <laughs> um, I forget who said it um, I think you know. Uh, it was Jamie, you or Michael, I don't know. But one of you guys mentioned that Star Wars Battlefront will be ported yeah. over to ver- to VR. For the- well, okay, yeah. so it's like, I don't know if it's an exclusive thing, but they revealed it with the PlayStation VR. Right, right. And I don't think it's going to be a straight one-to-one port of Battlefront. It's going to be like a Battlefront VR game that's not, maybe not okay. multiplayer. I don't really know. But I mean, oh, I, I hope they do the, the, the fight, or the, you know, the dog fighting in the air stuff, because... Man, it would make a lot of sense because most VR stuff works really well when you're in a yeah. cockpit and you can't move around. You can just look around. Right, that's a yeah. good point. Yeah. So 1991, huh? 1991. Se- Sega CD quality video. <laughs> it was bad. Like f- full motion video, what they used to call it. Like I'm sure the airplane was like five polygons. Like it was yeah. bad. You're sitting there flying around Star Fox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I was thinking, like, what if? All right, now I'm going way out in terms of like what VR could possibly be. What if right now is going to be considered the the dark the dark time in human history where nothing is recorded? So last week we were talking with Simmons at the end of the episode about uh, time travel. Well, VR could mm-hmm. literally make time travel possible. Like if you start setting up these these cameras in most areas, 
that our recording and storage space doesn't become an issue anymore for humanity, and you can basically record every moment of every time in 360 degrees, you could then essentially time travel anywhere at any time from that data recording point forward. I don't like that one bit. How awesome? Kind of, dude, that would be freaking kind of heavy, awesome. Dude. Every time you jerk off in the bathroom, it's going to be a camera at well, you, every angle? I guess you would have dark areas. Like, you wouldn't, you'd wouldn't. probably turn off the camera. Oh, dark space. Okay. And every time the ca- it would be like the Truman Show. They just turn the camera every time they have sex or he jerks off. Hmm. Well, you know, Jesus is always watching, so. I know, and I've come to grips with that. I have and now Big Brother can. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I just, I just think that's such a cool idea that at that point time travel is possible. Have you ever seen those like old timey photos when people just like go into Photoshop and color them realistically? Yeah, I had a class at the Art Institute to do that. It's when, like when it's done well, it's like holy shit, that looks like it. I'm actually yeah. there. Oh, I and didn't do it well. Be, no. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It, it is weird. Or I mean, even the small thing of like taking World War II war footage and then all of a sudden colorizing it, you're like, oh god, that was real. Yeah. Fuck, Nazis actually yeah. killed people. Yeah. Thought, it's weird. I thought we just shot them in games. Yeah. Right. Sorry, Grandpa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know how to retort that. <laughs> <laughs> so PlayStation VR. We didn't talk about price yet, did we? No, you didn't mention it. Okay, so it was announced like last week at GDC, I think. It is technically three ninety nine, uh, maybe not necessarily because you re- it requires the PlayStation camera, which it doesn't come with, which is an extra sixty dollars. So there's a lot of backlash about that. Um, but now they're doing a bundle that you could have maybe pre-ordered if you were super fast today for five hundred. That came with the camera, two move uh, joystick things, and a game. Just a pretty sweet deal. I could have had it. I had Amazon monies for my birthday, too. I mm. could have got the whole bundle for the price of the course. I know. Set. I was counting on you getting it because I yeah. need to know if it's going to make surprised. me sick. Well, <laughs> I was super excited, but then I got caught up in working because I have to do my job. And then <laughs> it went on sale at 10, and I realized it like 10 20, and I. It was gone. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, that's a good wow. sign for that VR. Fast. That's a good sign. But who knows how many they made. I did listen to an interview with Shuhei Yoshida, who's like one of the head presidents of Sony, and he said that the reason they pushed, because originally they were going to try to get it out in the summer, the reason they pushed it to October, which is the release date. Um, huh? What? Huh? Huh? Jeff's what? whispering stuff to me like I'm <laughs> supposed to understand his... Huh? Uh, what? What's wrong, Jeff? Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. What? <laughs> Speak to us. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, just say it. I don't know if it was recording, Michael. Again. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> uh, you guys want? Let's just continue. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you hear me? I've been able to hear him. Yeah. Yeah, I've been able to hear him. Is yeah. he recording? Well, hopefully that if it doesn't work, that mic will pick me up a little bit. This is going to be an awkward conversation for to, to leave in. It's definitely recording now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is how the podcasts get made. Then we're super professional pieces of shit. Don't fucking judge us. <laughs> we're already a half an hour in or so. I know. 18 minutes, 19 minutes. <laughs> All right, anyway. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Hey, all of a sudden, your volume got really nice. That's cool. Great. Um, I don't know what I was talking about. October. You're oh, talking about VR. I remember, I remember. Talking about Ishoshito. Shuhei Yoshida. Okay, yeah. That was close. <laughs> He said the reason they pushed the release date to October was because they were seeing way more demand than they actually expected. So they just, don't you do it. Don't. Okay, do it. (laughs) (laughs) I I like the double one. Oh, wait, what? (laughs) No, no, I I do. I like what you're saying. I just. They expected more to sell more than they had made so they need more time to make more and then boom they sold them out immediately that's so they ridiculous did, they didn't want to do the Wii thing where they make like 10 of them and then you know pump 
like 10 more out every two months. I so. sort of do think that's what they're doing, which is a little bit BS, but that's how you make artificial demand. Right. Yeah. See, I, I was curious what Oculus Rift, like how much they're pumping out. Cause it, well, it took me like almost a half an hour to finally get my, my order in. Um, but I, I have no clue since Facebook is backing them up how many they're making. Yeah. He did, Shuhei right. did mention that they're actually selling the VR, their VR, at a profit. So they're not, like, losing any money on the cost of making these, which right. is huh. pretty cool. That's interesting. So, Jamie, you're, you, you've you mentioned VR. Like, you've been on the bandwagon, obviously, since 1991. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, so you got the HTC Vibe, right? Is that right? Or... No, no, no. The Oculus Rift. Oh, you got the Oculus Rift. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it was a tough decision. Um, after looking at their specs and stuff like that, um, I just felt like the Vive was a little more bulkier, whereas the Oculus was a little more streamlined. And, um, of course there is $200 more, but you get those, um, sensors that you can put in your room where it's like, you know, 15 by 15 size room, but Oculus Rift also announced, uh, Something about room scaling, where I guess it, hmm. um, the camera can still track you inside a pretty big space. Um, so the only thing the Oculus Rift is missing is their their motion controls, their hand controls, um, which I was kind of a little disappointed that um, they didn't have that ready. But I don't know if there's too many games out there yet that are going to require it. Except yeah, for a rock band. They're not required on the <laughs> PlayStation VR either. You can just use a dual analog stick or a oh, controller. You know some of the, nice. the cool stuff that they mm. were talking about in that article about the, the – the, the, I mean, just it's all coming from GDC. But that, that processing box for the PlayStation, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. just yeah. – I mean, it just sounds like it does a lot of really simple stuff that like I hadn't really thought about before. It's like, yeah, of course you want to send another image to the TV so you can have peers watching yeah. the game. So it's not this sole individual game playing. You can still have social game playing as well. It's just very smart yeah. stuff. I'm sure everybody's thinking about, but it was like, oh, damn, yeah, of course you'd have to do that. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, that's that's actually a big genre now. It's like there, I've, I've seen quite a few games being developed for, the v, for VR that is party-based. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool that they did that. Yeah, and it seems like you you get to have multiple ways you want to show show it. You can either simply display your right eye, um, what you're seeing, or it can oh, be really? a whole different um, view um, sharing. But the developers would have to like. It seems like they would have to actually uh, try to create an create. image export. Like they would have to build that into their game. Um, it certainly My because kid, that would be higher well, res. My kids would break that shit in like <laughs> two days, two hours. That's the thing. That's one thing I do agree. VR is going to be seen as an adult toy for quite a while, I think. That's why there's yeah. going to be a lot of porn on it. I don't know, man. I, that, that's the thing. Like, unless they have a virtual representation of your cock, how do you know what to – like, isn't that going to be weird? Have you seen the PlayStation <laughs> wands? <laughs> They look just like a dingus. <laughs> Do they? Oh, yeah, you're right. With yeah. the little blue ball on top. Oh, God. <laughs> you could do all sorts of fun with that. <laughs> mm. I guess yeah, you sound like you know way too much about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing some research. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know where my money lies. The, uh, I think the PlayStation mm -hmm. VR looks really sleek. The only, my only small little gripe... And, I hope Michael doesn't hate me for saying this, but we'll see. <laughs> the uh, Oculus Rift and the Vive have like the strap that's kind of going down, like the top side of your head, whereas the PlayStation has this like kind of a big pad that sits like right on your like hairline. So I feel like it's gonna miss Jeff's and your yeah, hair. or it's gonna make your forehead look like <laughs> Peyton Manning. I can't believe you said that, Jamie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What an awful opinion to have. So bad. <laughs> Horrible friend. Yeah. <laughs> no, ah. but like, I don't know. I guess I would have to, have to try it out and see. So this sort of in tandem with the VR stuff, but also falls under, under the news category at GDC, was the rumor that there's a 
PlayStation 4.5 slash PlayStation 4K slash Xbox 1.5 or whatever the hell they're going to call that. Mid-cycle <laughs> upgrade. Yeah. They're calling it. Well, <laughs> What you guys so the only thing I the only thing I can see that's worthwhile in that would be a, a, a virtual space upgrade. Like, I don't know. I don't know a lot of people who have 4K. Like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, totally, exactly. You who, know what I mean? Who's I how many people have bought those TVs? Yeah, yeah, but I also don't think it's the ability to play games at 4K. It's more about the ability to play games at higher resolutions, specifically potentially for VR. At what point does the eye no longer give a shit? Well, I mean, we're there with that. Like, I, I'm not the only one, like, I see on my Facebook feed, like, we just got convinced finally to buy the PS4, and then less than a month later, <laughs> oh, 4.5, coming your way. It's like, fuck you. Hey, fuck you. Don't fuck them yet. It's just a rumor. Tech bubble, man. It's happening. <sighs> well, it's, it's like uh, when Microsoft did it for the Xbox 360 and made the Slim. I was... I was actually one of the first to adopt it myself because, yeah. like, well, first of all, it was a lot quieter than the original 360. But um, so, but I, I feel like it's almost too soon it, that they're not that they're talking about it, but like if they release it within like a year or two, I don't know. Not to I'm mention it'll like soon. splinter their audience if it's that much more powerful than the PS4. Then game makers will have to like create two different versions for yeah, the exactly. more powerful one and then scale it down, I guess, for the normal one. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It seems that's, weird. Yeah, that's that's what they've been saying, that they'll have to dumb it down. But, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. As far as, like, 4K, and yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people didn't adapt it yet. And But for, for VR, you know, PlayStation is set at uh, 1080p, whereas... The Oculus and Vive are set at not 4K, but um, like somewhere in between. It's like it's like 1200p or something like that. And so it's like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't seem to it's make weird. any sense. Yeah, I'm still gonna fucking buy it if they release it though. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, of course I am. <laughs> Why? Because I want better games that run faster and smoother. Oh no. I would not expect You're a you to whore, say that. Michael Berardini. <laughs> <laughs> I would generally You're would not expect frame rate that. whore. So Jamie might claim to be an Xbox fanboy or claim not to be an Xbox fanboy. I never claimed otherwise that no. I'm not a Sony fanboy. I will absolutely no. buy that up. I I definitely claim it. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so right. do you want me to continue with other news outside yes. of VR yeah, from yeah. GDC? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure the audience is anxious for us to move on. That was that was a 20 minute jag in which they only heard half of what Michael said. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about what I say anyway. So, IGF Awards. Yeah. Her story takes home excellence in narrative. Has any, has any of you? Did any of you play that? I I haven't pl- I, I haven't played it yet. I think I yeah. bought it on Steam when it was on sale. It's like it was like three dollars or something. But I haven't played it yet. Really? It looks really interesting. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Excellence in audio, Mini Metro. Haven't heard of that one. Neither Excellence in design, keep talking and nobody explodes. We talked about that on a couple weeks ago. Yep. Yeah, that sounds fucking super fun. Excellence in visual art, oxen free. Yeah, we and talked you, about yeah, that you talked well. about playing that. That was uh, yeah the right at the end of January. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Like I just as I suspected. I mean, it was so gorgeous to play that game. Um. Nuovo Awards, Sybil. That is cool. I I don't know. I I was listening to an interview with the uh, the girl that um, created that game. Just sounds really. She basically took the entire game and ripped out of her own life, and you play as her. Uh, huh. it, One hit wonder right there, if you ask me. No, I mean she's already got two. <laughs> I, I forgot the other game she's made. <laughs> uh, but it was another very 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 successful game. And then she's working with um, another very. I, I wish I, I'm horrible at names, so sorry about that. But she's working with another like video game developer um, guy. So he's she's very very talented. Um, but I just think it's very interesting. She and I think the whole game is like, as she explained it, it's 
her meeting someone online and meeting up to have sex with them. It's like oh. very like so that's why she won this Nuovo award, which is basically a game that doesn't fit into any category. Like she's doing something completely different. Um, very oh. cool. Uh, I would love to. I mean, it's weird to play as a girl trying to have sex with a guy, but <laughs> I I still think that is such a weird concept in a new game that it's like Michael and I were just talking like why GDC is so cool is the the amount of independent games it's so it's kind of more exciting than e3 with all the triple a but uh, yeah you get those like personal yeah. stories that actually connect with you instead of like fucking the division which i haven't actually played but it's just like you know shooting yeah but if anybody wants yeah. to check out sybil i i actually tried to look it up and i struggled to find anything about it it's because the spelling is fucking weird well you're talking to like c-i-b-e-l-e yeah okay but uh, like i'm the indie game guy I, I love indie games i haven't fucking heard of this word one before now right right but uh, again if you wanted to look it up how the hell would you spell sybil i don't know yeah i'm sure you're gonna start with an s right yeah yeah so I'm i already right. forgot what pete fucking Sibling said like sibling. c-i-b what c-i-b-e-l-e c kibble kibbles and bits yeah kibble kibble with a c <laughs> Anyways, uh, keep going down the list, Pete. So, best student game, Be Glitched. I don't know what that one's it, about. It looks very much like Be Jeweled. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Doctor. Uh, the Audience Award went to Undertale, which I really want to play. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, oh, I have I've seen this Sybil game. For a little bit. Actually. Yeah, see? All right, keep going, sorry. And the Sumas McNally Grand, Pri- Grand, Pri- Grand Prize is her story. Yeah. So... I'm going to have to play that one, too. Yep. Might have to check it out myself. And then uh, there were, they also held the uh, Game Developer's Choice Awards, which Witcher 3 is the... Uh, one, yeah, it was it was pretty, pretty established there. My precious boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, best debut goes to Moon Studio for Ori and the Blind Forest. Yeah, yeah. Best nice. audio, the Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Mm-hmm. Innovation Award goes to her story. Mm-hmm. Best technology, The Witcher Three: Wild Hunt. Totes. Best Best visual art, Ori in the Blind Forest. Best narrative, her story. Best design, Rocket League. Best handheld mobile game, her story. I didn't realize it was on mobile. Neither did I. Hmm. Audience Award, Life is Strange, Game of the Year, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Isn't it nice that there's such a plethora of different studios and games represented in their awards? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if there's any other awards shows that could learn anything from that. (laughs) So, going off of the Witcher 3 winning that technical art award, whatever the fuck you just said, I saw this fucking amazing article that was very short but sort of in-depth about the like an- animation system for all the dialogue in The Witcher, which is crazy because they're a relatively small team, but like every word of dialogue is animated and like the hands gesture like on the actual hmm. words and on the enunciations and everything. And hmm. it was basically they did like a set of animations and then you know they could take the arm and put it on the characters while they were sitting down or standing up or riding a horse. And then using algorithms and math and shit, they figured out where to put all those before an animator ever actually touched it. So then the animator could just go into each individual shot and tweak it. So maybe like sliding the arm gesture forward by two frames would make it read a little bit better or something. Do you think if we were to bring that team into Blue Sky, they could basically recreate Ice Age 6 for us? (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Probably. It would look pretty good, too. Because The Witcher was very impressive, and I found myself always wondering, like, how do they do that and match it up so nicely? And that's how. Fanciness. That is cool. Yeah. Very nice. So, Mitomo, Nintendo's first uh, mobile game came out in Japan. Ay, ay, ay. Apparently, it is meh. Really? I heard it was, like, blowing up. It is yeah. blowing up, but but from what I've read, it seems as though the initial reaction is like, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, to me, it, and, it's like the digi pets. It's like, yeah, a lot of people are playing because it it's weird. Dude, what those, is the point? Yeah. Those, I think they were called nano pets. <laughs> okay, by the nano way, pets. I gave my <laughs> life to my little fella. 
And then he eventually I ra- died. I had a Rancor. You had a Rancor. <laughs> I did. I had a Rancor. Man, those are cool. And I was I was old. I was like 20-something years old, and I had a Rancor. Tamagotchis. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. That's what they were called. With You had a little yeah. egg on the keychain. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That was cool. I was way too old for that shit. <laughs> no, it was awesome. Fuck that, man. I had one. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, no. Jamie, you... No. I, I don't know why Pete has no excuse why he should be anywhere near that stuff. Because <laughs> they were amazing. <laughs> taught me how to interact with people. <laughs> I, have the, I have the heart of a child. I don't know. How would you explain me, Tomo? Like, I, mean, I don't even know how to explain it, to I, be honest. I, yeah, I don't. I, the like, from what I've read, it, it, it's basically like you just collect clothes mm-hmm. and text answers to questions that your Mito- that your Mitomo asks you, so they could talk to other Mitomos. Yep, <laughs> it's like a but apparently the guy the guy who wrote it was out. like he, the guy who wrote the article was like, I don't I don't really know what to think of this uh, other than meh, but like I'm checking it all the time. Yeah, so he's, he's clearly addicted that. to it, but he doesn't know why and doesn't even really like it. Yeah, it's kind of like it's, Destiny. Yeah, it's like all addictions. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I still playing this? I don't know. I don't even like it. <laughs> so since we're on the topic of Nintendo, there was an yeah. image that went out on Twitter uh, last week. It has nothing to do with GDC. I just wanted to, to bring this up because this is another disappointment I have. Um, there was an image leaked of the alleged NX controller. Where's with the fart noise? This, yeah, exactly. With the screen... <laughs> the screen on the face of the controller. Oh, no. With the two sticks going through the screen. Oh, no. And, um... No. So, the reason being behind the, the design, from what I gathered from the patent that we've already talked about on this podcast, is that they could basically... It allows you to have uh, virtual buttons anywhere on the, on the, on the, uh, the surface of the... Wherever the screen is. Right. Um, but there's no force feedback. There's no, you know what I mean. There's yep. no. Uh, nobody so, wants so how, this. But that's nobody what, wants it. That's why it's like. I mean, there's still some debate whether that was an actual leak or not. Uh, of course, and it's it's alleged. All of it, it's alleged, but it's still thought provoking. Yeah. In you a know? bad way. Like, in a bad, in a very bad way. Like everybody, all everything that I've seen from this, people are like, this sucks. Yeah, and 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 I think that the if Nintendo was smart, they would just ditch it if they if they're going that direction. I have I have high hopes for the NX, but this controller, if that's the legit controller, this is <laughs> no, I got nothing. Not a, not the least to mention, like, what if that is the screen? Your controller like is part of the screen. Then you, or even if it's an additional screen, you're asking developers to create a whole different user interface content for your console alone. That has a weird fucking aspect ratio. Yeah, it's a fucking oval. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're cutting yeah. off a lot of material. There's no way to. There's no way you can convince me to say you're actually gaining real estate. You're losing real estate. You're losing user uh, interface stuff, little icons and stuff. Like, oh my gosh, it it looks like a disaster. It didn't even That's, look like ergonomical. Like, no, it didn't. Hands. Yeah, it no. didn't either. Yeah, which is weird because they're like the kings of handheld game systems, right? So, yeah. and I feel like, and it's still just a rumor, but the NX will be home console and hybrid of on the go handheld thing. Yep. And if that's what the handheld thing is, they're gonna fucking lose all their money. Yeah. Oh, it's like, hey, do you want to watch a movie yeah. on your on your on the go <laughs> system too? Oh, don't worry about the the corners of the screen. <laughs> Yeah. Not to mention uh, your thumbs are going to be fucking in the way of most of the... Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's so weird. Yeah. I mean, it's the reason why I don't play any real solid games on the iPhone. It's like, I need a controller. I yeah. need a controller. I want to see what I'm doing, and I need the detachment from the screen. I can't see what I'm doing underneath my damn finger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why I, I only play, like, strategy games on mobile device. I play uh, Siege Fall and... Uh, uh, what was the other one? Denomination. Oh, really? 
But like, yeah, I tried playing like Sonic the Hedgehog on my phone and stuff. It is it's so difficult. Oh yeah, I yeah. I ended up downloading Mega Man. <laughs> Impossible. Impossible it's to play. You can't feel the fucking buttons. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what you I'm can't doing. Feel the buttons. Uh, it's yeah. so. It's such a basic concept, and like it's completely lost. And yeah. Ugh. Aggravates the piss out of me. <laughs> so you have to get like a mm. a Bluetooth like game controller. Yeah. We got. I, I got some some feedback saying that we're too negative to Nintendo on the podcast and people feel bad for Pete because we're so negative to Nintendo. <laughs> but if Nintendo keeps doing this shit, then... <laughs> oh, listen, you want to talk... Oh, look, here's the yeah, deal. Yeah, I will go. defend Nintendo tooth and nail. But lately, some of this shit, I can't get behind. Well, that's I, I the thing. Can't... Yeah, totally. Like, I'm constantly looking backwards at the brilliance of Nintendo. Like, I just blew over $300 on retro <laughs> NES games this weekend. Like I fucking love it. I love it. I don't want any I don't want to collect any other game, any other console that is but Nintendo, Super Nintendo and whatnot. That's all I want. Yeah. But yeah. And, that, and I'm very uh, jealous of you that you have Snow Brothers, you bastard. <laughs> oh my god. That I'm I still am like I'm having dreams of it still. Like I it's in it's I can't awesome. believe I can't believe it. I can't I can't believe it. So for other people, like I went to a retro video game store, uh, a new one out on Long Island. Um, see if I can, I mean, not that anybody's going, but I think it's called Game On. So the first time I went there, and really, like they they had this one uh, area just for their like most like rare games. And I they had, they had, they, they had, <laughs> they had them all. Like they had, <laughs> like it was like, oh, there's. There's Battletoads and Double Dragon, and then right next yeah. to that was what's one game I didn't. I don't think I texted you, Pete. It like I had never seen it before, and so I it Chubby was, Cherub. Well, Chubby Cherub was there, and that wasn't even in the case. That wasn't even in their in their special case. That was just like a random game that they had on the wall. And I was like, what the huh. hell? Chubby Cherub's not even in their like. That's not their big game. Uh, Baby Boomer. Do you know that game? Oh yeah, that's a very rare yeah, game. Yeah, they had baby boomer just sitting there. Yeah, but how much? That was the thing. They're all very, very, very expensive. Um <laughs> But every everything in their store was twenty percent off last weekend. So that's why I got everything for ridiculous cheap. Yeah. Cool. Well, man. Snow Brothers is apparently a really good game, so my hat's off to you. Thanks, nice. man. Never seen it before. Glad I found it. How did seen you know it, it was rare? My... I mean, I watch enough like game chasers and whatnot oh. to know that Snow Brothers is a very sought after game. It's like that, um, uh, Flintstones, Panic Dinosaur Restaurant. Park, yeah, uh, th- yeah, and then what? Wh- uh, Little Samson, Little Samson, mm. Ducktales too. Nice. Like there's a DuckTales there's a handful two. of games that every two. yeah everybody's looking for. So everybody knows those games. I have none of them. Mm. But you have everything else. <laughs> but yeah, so like I know I have all the other bullshit. But, but to the point, like the, we're the all ones. huge, huge Nintendo fans. Like I think yes. all four of us are the the original Nintendo, of course. Like we want, yeah, definitely. we want the Nintendo to come back. But they're doing the, the stupidest fucking thing. Like even the success of the Wii, everybody's a- anybody smart still looked at it and said, "Come on, like how, this isn't gonna last. Like it's fun to play bowling with grandma, <laughs> but I'm not gonna." I am not going to get what I actually Mario want Jackson. out of this. Do, uh, yeah. Uh, well, another another piece of Nintendo game. news that came out today is the uh, the Wii U is going to be going to be ceased in development this, at the end of the year. Yep. I don't know if it's true; it hasn't been confirmed. But it's uh, it's for me, it's kind of a shame. Yeah, it's kind of a shame because uh, I think the game the system has a lot of good games on it, and. I feel as though a lot of the hate comes from ignorance. Like a lot of people who hate the system has ne- have never played it, and uh, yeah, I I don't know. That's my piece about it. But it is true. That's just more. That's just more bad news. You know. I've yeah. never played Nintendo. the Wii U, but there's also. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure the system is great. Nintendo makes good consoles, but there just hasn't been a game that made me want to actually pick it up and play it. Except for Mario Mark Maker, right? Like, come on. Like I want to play Mario Maker so bad. I feel like it's a learning tool. It looks like a lot of fun. Sure, but have you bought a Wii U for it? Oh no, they, so, it wasn't enough. Yeah. Right. And yeah. they could have fucking. I would have bought one day one if they just released a Zelda. But now that Zelda's going to be on the NX as well, most likely. So I'll be getting yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> Will you? Like if if the well, NX is actually we'll that see. controller, <laughs> you, that would probably make you skip over. Potentially. 
Like uh, as long as there's as 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 long as there it's not necessary. Well, if the NX yeah. comes out yeah. and it's not necessary to have that controller, I would never use it. Yeah, like their Game yeah. Pro controller or whatever they have for the Wii U. Yeah. Hey, at least good news. Uh, Axiom Verge is coming to the Wii U. Uh, I think this summer. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, nice. That's cool. But the. The thing is, this Thomas Happ is having to rewrite all the code just for the Wii U because of the... Ooh, that's not good. It took him a year to get it on uh, PlayStation <laughs> <know>. Vita. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he's got to do the, all the extra, uh, like... Coding. Well, the, yeah, because there's the extra screen, right? So they're trying to get the, yeah. the maps and everything to work on that other screen. Mm. So it's all this extra work they got to do. All one that's the, that's the thing, too, is, like, the apparently the other thing about that image that was leaked... Was that it's Unreal on the uh, the image was from Unreal mm. on the on the controller, so if it is true, it means that they are using Unreal, mm. which is which could be good for the system. I mean, it'd be a power enough, powerful yeah. enough to run the engine. Right. I, they're, I mean, they're saying the system would be more powerful than the current PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah. But now that we just got done saying that there's a mid cycle upgrade. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that mid cycle upgrade could bring it to what the NX will be. I, and and I used to, I used to be a you know, I mean, I, I still am a, a fan of Nintendo. But what led me to Xbox was actually the GameCube because the specs on the GameCube weren't matching up with what Xbox and PlayStation mm. had going for them, and so I was like, uh, it, it it was so hard not to buy a GameCube, but. That's what ended up making me switch to Xbox. Ugh, man, yeah. I had, the GameCube was the first Nintendo thing that I let go. Dude, I loved my yeah. GameCube. I had wished yeah, I, I liked wish my GameCube, too. It was great. And the, the, the Unreal thing, that's good, because they're going to need a lot of third-party support to actually make their console worth buying, because uh, yeah. they don't have a lot of that right now. But if that's, like, in-house at Nintendo, it's quite a shame that they're using a third party software instead of their own proprietary stuff because they've always made stuff look good like PS2, Xbox 360 era, whatever I always felt like GameCube games looked better even though they were underpowered comparatively they always looked really fucking nice yeah, yeah. so there you well, go well anyway, yeah. that's the Nintendo section of GDC news <laughs> I know, like I said, this could fill up our entire podcast just this news, like there's just been so much uh, uh, let's see go ahead. so the Xbox hosted a party <laughs> oh boy <laughs> that apparently uh, featured scantily clad dancers on platforms smart and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were beyond this <laughs> You know what I mean? At this day and age, I thought like, you know, with 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 what happened, uh, there was some sort of a scandal that happened. The same type of thing happened last year at GDC. Yeah. And then like, you know, with the whole, uh, what's that movement called? Uh, uh, but anyway, there, there's dicks. been a lot. Of, no, no, there's been a lot of a lot of awareness going Gamer into Gate. the fact. That, Game, Gamergate, thank you. Oh, yeah. I was way uh, off. <laughs> there's been a lot of awareness, not to, it's like you know, not to treat women as objects as much in video games and stuff like that. And Microsoft yeah. goes and does this. It's, it's like there's a time and place for everything. I don't feel as though a party celebrating a very well-known system is the place to do it. Yeah, I mean, remember the the Spike TV video game awards when the video game awards were on Spike? That's all it was. Well, I was likening it to when they announced the Xbox One at E3, and they're like, we've got football and basketball, and we got a sports car on the stage. <laughs> yeah, beer and stuff. <laughs> Women are nothing. Beer? Yeah. Yeah, Mountain Dew. Whatever. <laughs> totally. Like, no, it is. It's the Mountain Dew. Yeah, on. the Mountain Dew generation. Ugh, it's, no, but it's, it's funny because it reminds me of our Seagraph days where, you know, we went to the Art Institute um, after party and, you know, there's go go dancers everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's still going. And that's why they try to get rid of booth babes <laughs> at E3, but then they kind of realize, well, it might still help. Uh, Sell games if we have some hot chicks <laughs> next yeah. to our boots, but will it though? 
No. No, it 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 won't, but like it's it's funny that they they try to get rid of booth babes and they did and then the supposedly the audience, you know, declined that year and then they kind of I guess eased it back in, but I know, you know, it's very important for women to get into the game industry and bring fresh new ideas because we're getting stuck on, you know, shooters and stuff like that. But, uh, hmm. yeah. Side of Jamie, yeah. I have not heard before. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he's being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. No. <laughs> no, uh, no, but like, yeah, uh, Phil Spencer ended up, you know, apologizing, saying that it's not consistent with their, uh, you know, aligned with their, their views and values of Microsoft. I disagree. <laughs> I, I mean, you. It's I feel like, aligned, yeah, I feel like don't. your view of Xbox is Xbox is the axe Skin. deodorant of video games. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I would like to think it's not. I I really do like Xbox. We'll see where you land later on in the show. All right. All right. <laughs> Well, I wonder how many other after parties, you know, had go-go dancers there. Yeah, I, I, I remember I was at a PAX party. Uh, man, that was already five years ago, and there were go-go dancers in in one of the at one of the parties. I can't remember exactly who which party it was, but yeah, like even for five years ago, I I thought it was a little much, you know. Yeah, and totally. It's just it's just weird. You like, you don't go to those events to to stare at strippers you know it's not to mention not like, it's catering to yeah. some of the most socially awkward people in the in, yeah. you know like just yeah. people aren't good around that anyway so it's well, already just it's, wasted <laughs> it's like the the, the art institute after party is like it was a bunch of guys in a circle standing around the go-go dancer yeah yeah was, and all the cool so parties weird. like the blur after party you had to bring uh, you had to bring two chicks for every guy that would get in, and then oh, Crystal yeah. Method was playing, and we couldn't get in because we didn't know enough chicks. Like <laughs> each one of us only knew one chick, so it was like, well, we're not getting in. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, the, the the girls would so, have to, if you wanted to get all the guys in, the girls would have to go in, come back out, and walk each guy in. Yeah, that was stupid. Great, this is all. Well, it, it's it's an impossible scenario. You're dealing with Sigraph or Seagraph, whatever you say, and. Of course, there's ten dudes to every one girl, and then they have yeah. girls only after parties. Like, what the, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you that? That's what I'm saying. I, I I agree that we should stop the chicks with dicks uh, gate. Is that what we were saying? <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the scandal? Gamergate. 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 You probably don't <laughs> say bad stuff about it. I don't know anything about it, so I can say chicks with dicks. <laughs> 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 I'm Jonathan Blow. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be a good oh, segue into our Jonathan review. Blow of Witness. No. Oh, because I didn't play our anymore. Podcast review. Oh, take a break from the news yeah. For a brief we'll second. take it. Take a break. Um, a break. let's uh, let's get our background music going. This is high quality. Wait, right? No, 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 no. All right, go. Read it. Right yeah, now. do whatever. Yeah. All right. So this week's review for this podcast, known as Just a Few More Minutes, by our friend and possibly sibling. Oh yeah, let's let's <laughs> not include that person's name because this no. may be somewhat horrific of a review. <laughs> it's entitled. <laughs> About as amazing as autism. (laughs) No. This podcast... Five stars, by the way. This podcast is super amazing. I can only compare this podcast to parenting a nonverbal, wheelchair-bound 12-year-old girl (laughs) with autism. No. You know deep down that if something in the very beginning, something foundational, something genetic were different, then great things could have been accomplished. But that greatness will never happen, and you have to appreciate what you have. (laughs) Jeff and Michael love to drink, while the dead air is filled with Pete's feelings of regret. See? I told you this is amazing. In episode 6, they managed to get BJ Novak. I have no idea how the hell they pulled that off, but all he talked about was movie music. But what can you do? 
Overall, the episode was well constructed and thought out, as if the autistic 12 year old had a parent guiding the spoon to the mouth. Oh, God. Each episode becomes a longer time commitment. <laughs> Again, think of the 12 year old. And I'm sure that within a year, they will simply have a 24 7 live stream on Twitch. But if you enjoy a solid podcast with few guiding principles, loving friends, and random background noises, then this podcast cannot be beat. I mean, come on, these guys are Pixar animators, for God's sakes. Why not love them? <laughs> nice. Uh, so thank you, Curved Earth, for that. Oh, Lord. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> that is quite the hefty and probably going to get us in trouble review. <laughs> uh, and to add on top of that, we're always looking for additional reviews on iTunes. So rate us five stars or not, or write us a review or... Just write us a review. Well, Michael, we're, we're running could short read. on reviews, so fucking write some so we can read them. Yeah, we get several hundred downloads each episode, and um, not so not so much reviews. <laughs> nope. <laughs> People listen, go, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> it's understandable. Yeah. No, it doesn't take a long time to do it, but it also helps us out where we get more uh, eyeballs on the on the podcast. So yeah. It does, and it motivates us just to keep going. Yep. Uh, and this week's sponsor, we got another sponsor. Oh, yeah. Really? Yep. We lost last week's sponsor. Who was it? I don't even remember. I can't oh, imagine. It was Trump, why. wasn't it? No, was it? I don't oh, it was. Yeah, it, it was, was Trump. Trump. It was like parents for Trump. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Trump. Nah, he's doing just fine without us. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah. And his wall. <laughs> <laughs> but we did, what was it? $500 for every time we said Trump? That was cool. Yeah, that yeah. was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that that fuck him and his wall. <laughs> <laughs> this uh. week is brought to you by Coles. Coles has all the clothes for your new summer wardrobe at fantastic Coles prices. Right now, everything is on sale. It's always on sale. The entire store is always on sale. The sales tag is never the actual price at Coles. At Coles, we want you to feel good and always feel great about the deals you're making. And uh, your first look at the sales tag. Um, is never the actual real price. So, uh, if you see jeans at thirty nine ninety nine, well, find the sales sign that tells you the jeans of thirty nine ninety nine are actually thirty five ninety nine. Oh, what That's thing? what happens at Kohl's. Sure, we could tag the jeans with the actual thirty five ninety nine price, but how would that make you feel? Like you got ripped off, maybe? That's not how we do things at Kohl's. Uh, so shop at Kohl's online or in the store. There is no coupon code for being a uh, Jaff I'm listening because everything is always on sale all the time. Kohl's, <laughs> we make you feel like you got a good deal. Kohl's. I once Kohl's. bought a pair of pants at Kohl's that had two zippers in the dick area. Was it on sale? One for, one for each nut. <laughs> I want for each nut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you pull your nut out. <laughs> <laughs> you do it how you do it, I'll do it how I do it. Interesting topic that we haven't discussed on the podcast yet. Are you a over or through guy? Is this something people? we want to tell the whole world about which way we go? I'm a through. I know you're a through guy. <laughs> you're through the hole. I, I'm through the hole, yeah, damn it. That's what the through. zipper's made for. Right, right. Yeah. Takes too much time to unbuckle. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll just Jeff go is ahead. Over. I'll, I'll go ahead and get into it. One. He sits down. <laughs> only at home because my wife makes me. No, I, like <laughs> uh, I don't like urinals without dividers. Number one. Agreed. Nobody likes that. So that's at work. Well, sure. Okay. Yeah. Greatest part about Blue Sky. Let's not get into the weeds here. Let's not. Okay, so that. Often makes me go into a stall. Sure. Now, if I have stall time... You just drop trowel. Yeah, all the way to the floor. Yeah. No, it's just easier. <laughs> is it, though? Dude, there is a lot to wiggle out of that little <laughs> that little hole. And for some of us, it's not quite as easy as the other guys. <laughs> That's true. Hey, speak for yourself with the little hole, friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he buys big open <laughs> from Coles. I could put a beer can in my <laughs> dick hole. <laughs> well, rethink how you said that. Yeah, I know that's weird. <laughs> yeah. He's got the urethra the size of his forearm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just imagine the the like 
those gauges of um, earrings. You just slow. You start small and you slowly build up. You can essentially get that hole as big as you want. <laughs> uh, some squeamish listeners tune out for like five seconds. I knew a kid in middle school. He stuck a toothpick. Oh, good. Oh. The audio got fucked up. <laughs> uh, okay, so this kid in middle school, he stuck a toothpick up his dick. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't that hurt? <laughs> Do they call them splinters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the hell for? <laughs> I don't know. Just to see what would happen, I guess. He was fucking stupid. What would happen? <laughs> uh, yeah. That is the worst catheter I can imagine. Oh, the only oh, catheter to give you splinters. Wouldn't. That's awful. I'm sorry I brought it up, everybody. Anyway, you want me to go back on this yeah. list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done with sponsorship. We're done with uh, the comment of the week. iTunes, rate us five stars, give us a review. Subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. We're so talking to you, BJ. The, give us a review. These ga- through these games, there's a bunch of games that, that got uh, teased at GDC that I want to just throw out there uh most of them most of which the, were the best of from game informer uh, that's how i found out all right uh a game called beacon roguelike swat team sort of futuristic shooter sounds cool um isometric looks pretty cool my buddy's game perception where uh, you play as a blind woman mm-hmm. and what's what's the sound that that uh that you were gonna do for the game mikey <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bat. <laughs> I might actually be working on this one, so I'm stoked that it's getting so oh, much. Oh, cool! Coverage. I won't talk any mm. shit about it then. No, it, it right. looks cool. <laughs> no, it does look cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Elsinore, which is like a almost like a Shakespeare sort of game, uh, but it's an, a point-and-click adventure. I don't know; it's hard to explain, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, Streets of Rogue. Which is a uh, it's a fan it's a fascinating mess, a mishmash of genres. Huh. Um, it's a roguelike again. Uh, don't know what that means. We're yeah. probably gonna what we're probably what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna put links up to these games on the, on the Twitter and you guys could check it out. Sea Wars, sci-fi roguelite with a uh, pixel pixel aesthetic. Draws influence from Akira. Let me let me jump in real fast, Pete. Jeff doesn't know what a roguelike is. A roguelite? Yeah. Roguelike it's or like, roguelite? It's it's a game where you um you see how far you could get every time you play. Oh, but you may, it's like rogue but you legacy. Retain, right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. But you I didn't retain know everything that you yeah. collect. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you um, you have like. Uh, automated dungeons or whatever that's called. Randomly generated. Randomly generated, yes. It's, I don't think it necessarily has to be. Maybe it does. I remember I was just looking this up a couple weeks ago. But it's there was an originally based on a game named Rogue that did that sort of thing. And I think it is randomly generated. But yeah, you just go as far as you can. And then a, a real Rogue game, I guess Rogue-like with a K, is you go as far as you can and then you die. Then you have to restart. And then a rogue light, like Rogue Legacy, is you keep going until you die, but you retain all of your weapons and money and stuff. Right. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. All right, go. I won't comment on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the game Sea Wars is actually available already on early access. I downloaded it last night, and it is definitely an early access <laughs> game right now. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I had a hard time with it. Nothing seemed to work. It was. Uh, but it, but it was kind of fun when I when I when I did get it to work. Yeah. Uh, Deliver us the moon. I don't know if you guys saw this trailer, but it looks freaking awesome. I yeah, like it. It's the title. a it's good. sci-fi adventure game that casts you as an astronaut on a mission to save humanity. Hmm. It has an impressive opening sequence where you can actually get to go through the ignition system of a space rocket and slice the game. Uh, and slice the game slice of game where where you get to play through. Featuring a sequence where you're running around a station, turning on oxygen supply, and at, it was, which was very atmospheric. And Sounds spooky. ripe for VR. It's, well, it reminds it, me of Adrift, because mm. uh, it almost sounds sort of like that, except for 
seems like a drift you're like you know you're in, you're in space i think the space station and something goes wrong it explodes and you're kind of working your way through getting oxygen tanks and yeah. trying, to, trying to stay alive i guess but hmm. i'm actually looking forward to that game it's uh it, man and i'll tell you if you check it out it's it's really really beautiful looking game and it's 3d uh, yeah okay it's 3D indie game. Because everything um, you said was like right up my alley, and I was expecting super cool pixelation stuff. Oh. Uh, but then it's 3D. <laughs> but it still sounds awesome, and I'm going to look it up. It yeah. Cool. Um, I'm very stoked because Oddworld is making a new game. Yeah. For the first time, like a new game for the first time in a long time. It's probably since uh, Munch's Odyssey or the, oh, no, 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 The Stranger's Wrath. Yeah. Um, and they're doing it in parallel with a, a, the story is going to be a, a kind of Abe's Odyssey retold in a, 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 on a parallel storyline. So that should be an interesting game to check out. Um, I love Oddworld. It was a huge inspiration for me growing up. I don't know if you guys actually played it, but uh, I mean, I only limitedly at friends' houses. Yeah, I didn't have a PS1. That's yep. when it all started, yep. right? So this is the exact same scenario. I maybe played a demo at like Blockbuster, but that was it. Yep. I played uh, Stranger's Wrath on the 360, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. Man, I love Stranger's Wrath. You know, the story behind it was that they were um, back then when it was like PS4, I mean PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. Um, Apparently the 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 PS2 was really hard to code for, right. so they were they were late. They were running late on the um, on the PS2 delivery, and what ended up happening was that Sony uh, completely pulled all of their marketing for for the game. So it got very mediocre re- results, yeah. and um, but but the game is really really good, and it's really worth checking out. And it's still you could still get it on. Um, on Steam, yeah, um, it's totally worth checking out. It's such a fun game. It's a lot first fun. person, first person shooter where the, where the, every piece of ammo is a little character. Yeah. Oh, I remember that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so much fun. Um, Live ammo, <laughs> literally. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, did you guys? Let's see. The Fallout DLC launches today. Uh, Automaton. I don't give a shit. <laughs> um below yeah exactly <laughs> the below gets a new trailer did you guys check that out fuck looks yeah really, yep. that looked fucking awesome man yeah, looks really good i can't wait that game is taken for flipping ever to make though that was like that, one of the first games they announced with the xbox yeah that game and inside i feel like it's taken forever i don't even know uh, what yeah. inside is inside's uh from the creators of limbo Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those two, those two uh, seem to be taking taking their time, but might be worth it. I felt like Below had a like an art style change. Like it still looks the same, but this latest trailer looked way more three D than I ever remembered. I always thought it was like two D, but this the characters in the backgrounds looked three D, but still super stylized. I wonder if that's yeah. why it's taking so long, or maybe I just never fucking paid attention. I don't know, but I know what you mean. It has it's it kind of has its own sort of. It's almost like cubism. Yeah, it's, it's like w- it's weird, weird isometric, but has a little bit of depth, and it's got like tilt shift, uh, focus blurring, and whatnot. It's really sexy. <laughs> sexy. <laughs> I want to make love to that when it comes out. And last one, uh, Hyperlight Drifter. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm on board now. <laughs> now I'm finally. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's me making love to it soon because it comes out on the thirty first <laughs> uh, for PC and for PC and Mac. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> okay. for those for those playing at home, he just made the double double dong gesture. I, I just I grapefruited that shit. <laughs> He's like a seal at the circus playing the horns <laughs> with his nose. <laughs> yeah, this that has game was incredible. Episode for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Jeff just took an inch move f- away from Mike. Yeah, Dick. he gave me looks me? like <laughs> he'll deal with me until it comes out. <laughs> it's like I am. I am leaving. <laughs> yeah. And no, but the art looks incredible. Just the art alone. Yeah. Like I want to play it so bad, but I gotta wait until the summer or whatever when it comes out for PS4. So I backed I'm it a, on I'm Kickstarter. Actually... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's right. I'm. Backed it on Kickstarter, and I signed up for the PS4 version, which I don't really know why. But So I'm going to buy it on Steam when it comes out, and then get my free version on PS4 later. That you're going to give to your friend Jeff? Fuck you. <laughs> it's going to be like I'm gonna, $15. I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah. I'm going to do the same thing, because I don't think I can wait. I also I want to give those developers, and specifically, I think his name is Alex Garland, something like that, the mm-hmm. like head guy of that studio... He's going through hard stuff. I don't want him to die with no money. So I'm going to give him all the money I can. Yeah. I like him. I like him a lot. Well, you could have gone with a higher tier, you greedy son of a bitch. (laughs) That's true. I I did give him an extra five bucks for the soundtrack by Disaster Piece, who did the music for Fez, and one of my top movies of last year, It Follows. Hmm. Hmm. Wasn't that music pretty fucking sweet? I don't know. I didn't in the see trailer? that. I did not see that. Oh, in the trailer, yes, it was amazing. Like nice yeah. piano concerto, whatever you call it. Yeah, but then it drops in with the sweet beats. Mm-hmm. Fuck it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did we? Did you guys? Say, I, I may have tuned out, but there was a new trailer. Today. Oh my god! Did you say that? Did you, you say the trailer? We've been talking about it. <sighs> no, but you said it was coming out on the thirty first, but I didn't know if the trailer. We you talked said about. you were gonna listen better, Jeff. <laughs> I know. I get. <laughs> I get so excited about like the thirty first, and I'm like, oh yeah, I got to talk about the PlayStation and how it's not coming out for the PlayStation, and then you guys say the trailer, and then it's like, okay, this is where I talk, and then <laughs> and then I re say what you say. I'm sorry. I'm a horrible listener. <laughs> All it's right. Okay. This. I, side note, I do feel like doing this podcast is making me a better, better listener in life. Because listening back to the podcast, I'm like, holy shit, you don't listen to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just don't listen to the podcast. I don't want to know how I can improve as a person. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll tell you how you can improve. Okay. Yeah. Less dick jokes. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so that's that's all the GDC and gaming news that I have compiled. Excellent. That was a lot. An hour in. Out. Go, Jamie. GDC. Um, Microsoft announced the crossplay. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. What's crazy is I thought it was just going to be between, like, Microsoft products, so, like, you know, Xbox, the PC, mobile. But come to find out that, um, you know, they kind of invited PlayStation to see if they wanted to do cross-play. So. And I feel like Rocket League will probably be one of the very first games to utilize that, too. Yep, yeah, totally. Yeah, there was an article saying that um, he, he already figured it out, and it's ready. He's just waiting for the politics to pan out yeah this is super huh. cool because i know at some point sony said that they would absolutely be open to yep. doing that with xbox and that was when sony was like way lagging behind xbox and they were just trying to do anything to get a piece of that pie but now it's cool i mean it's probably sort of a similar case right now xbox is trying to catch up to playstation but I mean, this is what we've all been asking for for forever. Yes. And I, developers, too. I hope yeah. Rocket League does servers based on Xbox versus PS4 users. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that'd be so cool. Oh. Test out the servers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to I, I wanna know. It's like, who's better? Which controller is better? Let's see the stats. <laughs> yeah. You don't think that'd be cool? To... I don't oh, think that cool. would be a good barometer of which controller is better. It would be Let's go back to the yeah. back to the days of the ColecoVision, where they had an attachment that you put on the front that you could play Atari Twenty Six Hundred games on the ColecoVision. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine that? I mean, like that's kind of the same thing now. It doesn't matter. You could play like mm-hmm. you could play these games across platforms. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, sort of makes you regret buying a PS Four, doesn't it? No, I'm just kidding. Me? I, no, he's talking no. about yeah, my that I just bought it, Except but no, definitely not. Because they they 
I mean, this is a perfect segue, actually. They both have their great advantages and disadvantages, and I'm very happy to have both. I, I'm i surprised how much I'm switching back and forth on a regular basis to use both systems. Like, I didn't buy a PS4, and then all of a sudden, that was all I was using. It's just not not how it's happening. I'm using both of them pretty equally. So maybe this is a good time to segue into... Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. It's Michael and Jamie's top six reasons to own a PlayStation versus an Xbox or vice versa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this All right. is going to stay civil, goddammit. So, let's get into you know, those top has, six. Though. Everybody wants us to fight. I won't allow it. So they're going to count. I'm kind of looking forward yeah, to I it. Yeah, I am too. Like, go ahead and get into it, man. We're... Well, how forward. are we going to do this? All right, so... I number six. Yeah, I feel like start at number six, and we should definitely have you go first so Michael can... Get, or, Michael. So Jamie can get the last word in since he's our guest. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't beat my number one anyway, so... He's going to try. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. All right, well... Oh, yeah. Man, I feel like a fucking lawyer, and I have to argue my case, and this is lame. <laughs> But so yeah, here's my opening, um, my opening speech. What are they called? Opening statement. Oh, I didn't prepare one of those. That's okay. <laughs> so my opponent, he's going to talk about a lot of different things. What am I listening to? Football? I don't know. Hold on. What is it? It's fucking like football. <laughs> it's like wrestling, I think. This is no. Oh yeah. <laughs> You like it. <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's a trademark, man. We're in trouble. You're talking. Okay. No, we're turning copyright it strikes. <laughs> copyright. All right. My opening statement to you, Jamie, and to our listening audience. Yes. Jamie's going to talk a lot about a lot of different things about the Xbox. He's going to mention TV integration. He's going to mention Skype, maybe. A bunch of shit. <laughs> Jeff wants me to pour him a drink in the middle of my fucking <laughs> opening statement? Come on! I guess it's way over there. You huh? fuck face. <laughs> it's all about me. I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk about the only thing that matters to me. And that's pretty much games. At number six, we have the, it's called the cross-buy, cross-play system, and I'm going to inc include remote play as well. Cross-buy, cross-play. Basically, if you own a PS3, a PS Vita, a PS4, pretty much most of the indie games that you buy, you buy it once, and then it's available on all your other systems to play cross save you you can play on your playstation 4 you can put it on your vita you can take it elsewhere you basically never have to stop gaming cross save though i, I i'll be I, i'll be a little bit of a judge for what little i know but cross save is only open to games that the developer I'll correct built that into the system correct and some games don't support it some games don't necessarily do cross buy uh like you may only get cross oh, save as opposed to cross buy, but right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all there, and the potential is there. The it's potential just up to there, the developers yes. to basically make things easier on you and enjoy their stuff more frequently and easier. It makes you wonder why the developers don't do cross buy between systems if it's truly up to the developer. That would be pretty great. Hmm. Um, and then the other half of this that I forgot to mention is remote play. Which is, you can basically, if you have a PlayStation Vita, which I know this is only about PlayStation 4, but I like the Vita a lot. Tell me I'm, I'm still being recorded. Okay. <laughs> Remote play is, say you have a wife and she wants to watch uh, Girls on HBO. Boom. You let her watch Girls. You stream your PlayStation 4 game to your Vita. It looks pixel perfect exactly the way it plays on the PS4 on your Vita. There is a slight lag, so it's probably better to not be playing a Twitch shooter on it or something, but it's there. Super cool. Very useful sometimes, <laughs> depending on games. <laughs> okay. But it's cool. We we use had that from the beginning, just so I'm just, yeah, but, just putting it out there. You know, nobody plays that. I do want, actually, I forgot to mention this to you guys. I thought we were going to be nice to Nintendo. 
That's what I'm about to say. Oh. I want Pete to have top six reasons to buy a Wii U. Oh, well, it's a little late for that. <laughs> you can't put him on the spot. <laughs> hey, I made my sixth this afternoon. <laughs> I didn't give it any thought. Uh, top six reasons to buy a Wii U. Go, Mario. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Maker 1 through 6. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Oh, I'm go- oh, that, that was his top six. Now it's that, that was my time. six. Yeah, that was number six. six. Number that six. was great. Number six. Okay. okay, I'm feeling good about buying a PlayStation now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my number six actually comes down to uh, new leadership because Steve Ballmer and Don Matrick did a horrible job launching Xbox One, shot themselves in the foot, and... In fact, uh, Don uh, Matrick went on to uh, Zynga, and, and, but he no longer is the CEO over there either. But anyways, new leadership, Phil Spencer. I love what he's doing. I He's listening to everybody, getting feedback, and executing on everybody's requests. And he's bringing uh, back them boobies. <laughs> <laughs> and throwing... Some uh, exotic parties. No, sure. <laughs> no, I agree. He he feels much more like ready to build well, up the he, games. He's yeah. a gamer. Yeah, he's he should have been lead on Xbox One from the beginning. Whereas Don Matrick, I don't even think he ever played a video game in his life. I could no, be wrong. He but. was totally the dude, bro, that would want to look at stripper girls dance while <laughs> yeah. he fucking jacks off onto his Mercedes. <laughs> man, have you ever seen that dingus man he's a fucking douche that nozzle. is a bucket list thing to do <laughs> just look at a girl while you jack off onto a car <laughs> oh well mercedes specifically <laughs> all right but even even the the, C, the ceo i can't ever pronounce his name uh setai nadelia is that close sure uh, <laughs> but you know microsoft's yeah i I tend to day trade from time to time, but uh, Microsoft's stocks for almost like a decade with Steam Ballmer has stayed like in the $30 range, and, and finally their stocks are back up into the $50 range. So it goes to show like their leadership's definitely helping out Microsoft. I will agree. The They've been making a lot of good decisions, and it's a much better console than when they announced it. Yes, far better. All right. All right, number five for you. My number five, you would think it's, you know, number one, but it's fucking number five. It's number five. It's all the exclusives. Oh, here we go. Which, I'm not going to name a whole bunch of them. I'll name some that have come and some that are coming. Uh, Bloodborne, an amazing game that got very high scores. Until Dawn. That super awesome game that I was talking about a while ago. Coming in the future this year, Horizon Zero Dawn by the guys that made Killzone. That shit's going to be fucking amazing, guaranteed right now. Calling it. Uh, No Man's Sky. No, wait, Horizon what? Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, Last Guardian. Yeah, that's a big one. Who knows if that game will even be any good at this point because it's been in the cooker for so long. (laughs) But, by God, that team, Team Eco, they made my favorite game, which is Eco. So, that alone, to me, is worth owning this console. Even though, technically, they said it was going to come out on the PS3, like, ten years ago. You know, whatever. So th- Wii U has exclusives, too. Yeah, but not good ones. <laughs> That's, Xbox. That's not true. Gears of War 4. Yeah, nobody cares about Gears of War anymore. <laughs> I like Gears. I I heard it it's uh, got some good reviews so far, but but it's not being made by Epic, right? Right. That that's a big negative. Yeah. But I'm sorry, everybody. I forgot to mention that they were good exclusives. I should have I should have <laughs> oh, said that. Right. Okay. Oh. Good exclusives. <laughs> good exclusive. Like like below and and uh, and that's, that's all you can name. Record. <laughs> <laughs> Halo. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh boy! Oh, that's a big exclusive. Big. I said good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Working. Uh, well, 
Yeah. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to stay unbiased, but Halo is a big pull for Xbox I agree. users. And uh if we're talking about exclusives, Xbox has Quantum Break coming out in like April. And that game looks fucking great. And Ori. And Ori. Ori. Yeah. <clears throat> I but again trying to play judge. I didn't think about doing this, but playing <laughs> Playing that role, like that, has been the biggest thing. Buying the the PlayStation Four in the last month is all these games that where I was locked out of all of a sudden are available to me. Yeah, and I think that also goes into what Jamie's last point was about new leadership. Their previous leadership did not give a flying fuck about indie games. Yeah, yeah. and now it yeah. seems like they are. They're just lagging behind Sony because Sony yeah. was ahead of the curve on that. So eventually, yeah. potentially, some of this stuff will get to Xbox. But... Which is so funny because I feel like on the three hundred and sixty. It was the exact opposite. They were the indie yeah. company. Like that's why I love the market. Yeah, like exactly. That. The 360 marketplace, whatever they called it. Yeah. It was the marketplace, right? I think it was the arcade. It was like arcade. Xbox was Live arcade. arcade. Yeah. 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 Okay. But I mean, just Behemoth alone with uh, Castle Crashers and then Super Meat Boy. Oh, like, God damn, man, that was freaking awesome. Which yeah, Castle you, but Crashers. you also weren't playing PlayStation. Like, the, those indie games are built up in your mind because that's where you were playing them. Yeah, but they weren't available on the PlayStation. Yeah, they were. Super Meat Boy? They, like, just got to No, not like Super Meat Boy. Okay, that's one, but there was or plenty of indie games on PlayStation. Castle Crashers was there. I played was it on PlayStation. Yeah. Uh. Well, let's do some uh, research. Right now. I actually, I can't <laughs> say it, but I do, I do feel like that they that was... That was an early thing that, um, Pete, you were mentioning earlier, it was hard to code for the PS2, but I feel like that was a development thing for the PS3. It was difficult yeah. to make indie games for the PS3, and it was easier for the 360. And then when they switched over to PS4 and Xbox One, it became the exact opposite. And indie gamers ran to the PlayStation because they were, like, being invited. They were, like, PlayStation was, like, yeah. being super generous. And that's all I, for GDC, hearing all the um, developers talk, that's all they talk about is, like, how warm and inviting and comforting Sony is as a company to to make games for. Right, but you're acting like there was a major seismic shift when it came to the PS4. At the end of the PS3 era, there was way more indie games on PlayStation than there were on Xbox. Mm, yeah, you would definitely know better than me on that, for sure. I mean, we were talking about it. Like, I much prefer indie games to AAA games, like, yeah. by far now. So that's pretty much all okay. I play. But anyway... All right, your number five, Jamie? My number five comes down to um, backward compatibility. So Xbox has over 140 games that you're able to play your Xbox 360 games onto your Xbox One, whereas you know, before you couldn't. And I'm, I'm not sure if can you play PlayStation 3 games on PlayStation 4? Uh, they have to re-release it again, but yes, that's already been there re-buy? since day yeah. one. Uh, depends on the game developers. Like I had Journey, yeah. and they just released it on PS4, and I got it for free. Yeah, so it's gonna come down to like the developers again, because like I ended up having to buy um, Grand Theft Auto Five twice because I bought it for the Xbox 360, and you know because it was like the game was coming out right when the Xbox One was coming out, so they kind of held back, and then. All of a sudden, you know, they released it for Xbox One, so I went ahead and uh, and ended up repurchasing it. And so that that's that's going to be Is interesting. That right? like, because like, I feel like the, most of the games they're just emulating the 360 on the Xbox One, so it should be the exact game, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. That that's what they're they're doing um, for the backwards compatibility. Okay. But I still think it's going to end up coming down to developers, like like Michael was saying with PlayStation. You know, it's going to come down to what they want to do with crossplay if they are going to allow you know to have it on a bunch of different systems and yeah. and whatnot. I mean, I can definitely see that if they're hey, there's a 360 version and there's an Xbox One version. Are you going to honor the Xbox One version with that? Right. But yeah. in terms of like the Xbox One emulating the Xbox 360, those games are available to anybody yeah as long as you bought them they're yours yeah which i think is awesome because like not like you were talking about cross saves like all my saves from castle crashers came over to my xbox one that was freaking awesome 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then uh, same with Super Meepoy. Like, everything came over. Uh, and DuckTales as well. Well, no, DuckTales isn't available. I'm hoping it will. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say Sony is doing just as well a job, but like I said, they basically, games have to be not remade, but like reported over to the PS4. But then they also have their PlayStation Now service, which offers like all of the PS3 catalog. Well, not all of it, all, all the like major players that you would want to play again and some yeah. PS2 games or something. But that's a subscription service and it's way too fucking expensive. And you stream the game to your console from yeah. their cloud or whatever. And I haven't tried it, but from what I've heard, it's a little laggy. And Yeah, the reviews have not been stellar for that. Yeah. Sounds complicated. Ding, it's not great. Ding, ding, ding. Round five <laughs> over. Four. All right, bring out the chicks with dicks. All right, they're carrying the sign over. Round four. Uh, why do all the chicks have dicks in your world? <laughs> that's that. That's he's, just he's means trying not you... to be sexist. <laughs> yeah, back in the eighties, when you flipped to, uh, I think even earlier, when you flipped to the end of the magazine, that's how you knew it was done. It's like you saw all the girls, and then there was the advertisements for chicks with dicks. <laughs> what? Come on, Pete. What magazines were you No, Pete, you're supposed to back me up. <laughs> uh, it was always the weird... All right. Call 1-800-Chick-Dick. No? <laughs> nope. <laughs> come on, come on. Somebody out there is going, I know, I know. Please write a review. Tell us about your dick chicks, your chicks with dicks. Guys, Five stars. walking. <laughs> what? Elephant walking. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> number four we've pretty much already covered it so we don't really need to anymore but playstation has its own virtual reality headset <laughs> oh snap what? that's a pretty big one <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i actually don't know why microsoft's sitting back on vr i know they said that they, they fucking failed with the connect <laughs> <laughs> oh playstation with the move the move is useful now those are the controllers no. <laughs> you use for the VR. <laughs> which, which is it was their that's plan a, all that's, along, that's, idiots. <laughs> that's a fucking yeah. stretch, bro. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a stretch. Because like, well, and and you're gonna laugh because my number four is actually the Connect and dashboard oh. slash dashboard. Oh, but that is funny. <laughs> you know, Sony. When 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 Microsoft shot themselves in the foot at the at the launch, you know, Sony was like. Let's remove that camera, get it, you know, the price $100 lower than Xbox, and we'll kill them. And it worked. And But it kind of sucks now that you need the camera back with, with those motion controllers for the VR where you're spending an extra 100 bucks. But anyways, Kinect, dashboard. I The Kinect, you know, the motion sensing, it's, you know, it's okay as far as, like, dancing and stuff, but I love it for... Saying, you know, Xbox turn on, which hopefully it doesn't. Okay, we're good. Um, wow, it doesn't work very well, huh? <laughs> oh, it works. I'm just not close enough. I, I will agree with Jamie. I use my Connect all the time for talking to it. Yeah, yeah. Voice commands all the time. Like, mm-hmm. record that. Record and that is to... the only useful thing, in my opinion. I've had and, to say and... Xbox on, like, fucking 12 times for it to fucking <laughs> recognize my voice. Did you do? Did you set it up properly? Of course See, I did. I'm not nah. stupid. Yeah. Well, that's the thing because I think some people don't calibrate it because you have to calibrate it, and I think one of our friends, Matt Double, <laughs> has not <laughs> calibrated his mic because every word he says will translate to Xbox, and his menu like appears on the screen or whatever. But I have to say, if you have it calibrated correctly, that it is 100 percent times. Better than Siri. I can't stand Siri. I hate her. Yeah, <laughs> Siri's a bitch. I, uh, <laughs> she frustrates me. <laughs> I'm surprised you even try to use her. But you also, the other point you said was the dashboard. The dashboard, yeah. If you like to, um, you know, I, I'm actually one of the people that don't have their cable box hooked up to their Xbox. But What? I totally thought I you would have. <laughs> I, I think most people don't. I will agree. I Freaking love it. Yeah. I I've tried it. I could not stand it. it. What? What's not to love about it? Like HBO or, you know, Xbox, find HBO. Yeah. Like that, because then it sends me to fucking HGTV. 
<laughs> it doesn't ever go to the channel I say. But I will say outside of the connect, like just the dashboard, like quickly navigating to channels mm -hmm. and not having to switch your video Party inputs constantly. It's like, here's what you do. You turn on the TV, Xbox on. Like, and then if I was being really snazzy, I could say TV on, Xbox on, walk in and then say xbox go to espn and then i'm watching espn like i didn't touch anything are people that lazy that you can't fucking change an input it's, it's not that hard and it's not that big of a selling point come on people no but i like it i i yeah. do find like once you get used to it you and then you have to go back like right now i have to switch my video input every time i want to play the playstation it's a little bit annoying compared to the it just <laughs> is it's not Whatever. streamlined I when I first got the Xbox, I plugged my cable into it too. I could not ooh, ooh, stand it. Oh, but all right, the dashboard. I, an, an extra benefit. I'm just playing devil's advocate with Jamie right now. No, you're playing <laughs> devil agree. <laughs> because I like the fact that all right. So a major downside of playing Halo is the wait time in between games. All right, how about you use this Xbox Snap TV? So now it quickly does a picture-in-picture. Picture. Oh, cool. Now you're watching a fucking four-inch screen of a, a sports game. <laughs> exactly. I'm watching, I'm watching my Broncos <laughs> destroy whoever they're playing that week while I'm playing. And it, it doesn't affect the game that well. Uh, like, playing, you can continue to play, and I don't feel the degradation that much. You it's, can watch, you know, ESPN and and snap your fantasy on, on league on the the side of the TV, yeah. so you can. Oh, cool! Watch. I'm just gonna go jack off on my Mercedes while I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's an. Like, do you I'm, actually use that, Jamie? I use. I use. Don't you a lot. fucking lie to me? I don't. I don't. Since I don't have my cable box hooked up to the Xbox, I can't say I use like the one guy. No. But I I do use it for you know Twitch, snapping Twitch, snapping. YouTube videos. Oh, snapping Twitch is good too. The, you, but the funny thing is, like, I when I hop online, like, I see people always on like Netflix, HBO. They're you know they're using it for TV, which you know that was one of their things that they wanted to accomplish. Um, but of course, Sony kind of shoved it in their face, saying like, "Hey, we're we're an all game console. Come come join yeah. us." Well, <laughs> oh, go ahead. That's what I'm going to say about the difference between the Xbox dashboard and the cross media bar on PlayStation. Like, I will agree that the user interface on Xbox is pretty slick looking, but uh, I feel like the PlayStation is like no frills and it's much faster for it, and it's way easier to find the shit that you want. Oof. The the late I, playing now to you. The latest update to the dashboard of the Xbox is a goddamn mess. It is so hard to find everything. I haven't plugged They've, in my Xbox in a while, so I don't know. They messed it up bad. It's very difficult to even find the TV. Last time I turned it on when I was playing Tomb Raider, I don't know if it's because I hadn't like downloaded the latest patch or something, but it was so slow. And it, I was mm. talking to our friend Dolby, and he's like, no, it was super fast. It, but is. it was The latest one's yeah. super fast. It's crazy slow for me. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think you just got to update. But Pete, I was gonna say like the coolest part about like snapping Twitch was like when you used to do your retro game break on Twitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These are, I think they're still archived on YouTube. But he used to play these uh, Nintendo games, and you you just watch him review a game and play an old retro game for like forty five minutes. And I would like continue to be playing Halo or whatever, and then just on the right size, like there's Twitch, a nice big. I'm listening to Pete also play Little Samson. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Cool ability. Whose turn is it? And that's built it's into yours, the system. Oh uh, yeah, it's built in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The snapping is cool when it works and when it actually recognizes what the fuck you're saying. Yeah, I mean the the quick workaround is like say you don't have a connect. They've now made it. You just double tap the Xbox button and then you can quickly snap anything. Super super the, fast. Took them like the, two years to get that. It did, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The party chat's so much better than the old one that they had set up too. I feel like. Like joining, you know, yeah, the, that's good. your friends and stuff like that. Now you can see who's in their party and, and whatnot. Yeah, you know if you don't want to talk to those people. Yeah. <laughs> Thias. <laughs> <laughs> it's my ambi crew. <laughs> yeah. Snap. Just calling them out, huh? He knows how I feel about them. <laughs> uh, okay, so my number three, number three. is PlayStation Plus. The equivalent of Xbox Live Gold, whatever, yada, yada. 
But I think it's better because on Xbox you only get two free games a month. And that's wrong. Te- okay, four games Sorry. a month. <laughs> you get two shitty old games on Xbox 360. You get two games on Xbox One, and most likely one of those Xbox One games will be a fucking pool game that sits there for fucking six months. <laughs> pool X hasn't been on for a while. <laughs> PlayStation, you get six new games every month. There, so you got two PS Vita games, you know, give or take quality, two PS2 games, and two ps4 games now the cool thing comes back to my number six is cross buy cross save all that stuff so more than often i'm usually getting four to five sometimes six games on my ps4 alone every month and they're usually like the sweet new indie game that you haven't heard about bro force is awesome like i've gotten so many amazing games like my playstation uh library of games is just chock full of amazing stuff I went over to Michael's house recently, and he scrolled through his games. It takes, <laughs> like, time to scroll through all his games. Yeah. We did a comparison of your library and my library. Yours was like, yeah. I was like, for like 30 yeah. seconds. Like, you can count the seconds on, on Michael's. Mine's is like, blip. Like, uh, and I, I thought it was Trevor's, actually, that we compared. Oh, yeah. He had a shit library, too. Yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, PlayStation Plus is great. And the only shitty thing about it is you lose access to those games once you end your subscription. And I think on Xbox you get to keep the games when yeah, your subscription. you bought them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool, but, I mean, I don't have any reason not to subscribe to PlayStation Plus anymore. So it's pretty great. Jamie, number three. Number three. It's uh, Smart Glass slash... Xbox Windows 10 app. And first thing I love about uh, Smart Glass is if I'm not upstairs to say Xbox on, um, oh, it just turned out. This <laughs> 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 fucking Xbox. And I'm back. Um, so I know that. Like, it just shows you how good it works. Uh-huh. It's so listening. If, if, it's always listening. If you know, if I'm downstairs, I'll, and you know, of course we're supposed to have, you know game night on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I won't go there. <laughs> no, but um, so you know, I'll get a text and say, "Hey, who's hopping on?" And then I'll just hop to my smart glass and and turn on my Xbox from my cell phone, from my iPhone. Um, I I love that feature just as much as saying the on command <laughs> but um what a time saver yeah right. <laughs> it's cool <laughs> i mean when i come upstairs it, it's on it's ready and and it, it signs you in too right so if you say x on then um it doesn't sign you into your profile if you have other profiles but if you sign on with your smart glass then it, it logs into your account um, of course, you can have it set to automatically go to your account uh, if you're the primary person. Yeah. But um, dashboard, or sorry, the Xbox Windows 10 app. Um, you know, like Michael was saying with the Vita, you can do it with your PC if your your woman's watching TV, and you you can stream your Xbox games to your PC and play from there. Um, the other thing is like. I'll be I'll be working on my PC and I'll see a pop up saying uh, Jeff's online, and so I'll if if I feel like harassing him I'll you know I'll click on the the little pop up and send him you your know, dick pics. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> he always asks me for them. So. <laughs> uh, it's so rare when I get one. Higher ISO. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'll you know I'll send a little message and. And I can also see what he's playing if if I want to be a stalker. But well, and he's then usually the, playing Mega Man. I like like we'll, we'll we'll have a night of games, and there'll be some some video that w- you'll have saved, oh. and then you can share that with everybody really quick through the smart glass, and then I can watch your video, and it's surprisingly extremely high quality as well, and that's yeah. all happening through the smart glass. It's very yeah. slick, and you can do that through your Windows 10 app too. If you, it's you know if you like mouse keyboard thing to edit and 
slice things together faster instead of doing it through the console. I know. I feel like it's those kind of small, really cool things that gamers are not taking advantage of. They just don't yeah. know it and they're not using it, and it's super slick and awesome. Yeah, I agree. It's too bad. I don't know. Remember when I made that super slick video when I got to like level 30 on <laughs> Destiny and I sent it to you? <laughs> yeah. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I got all those videos of people like surfing their uh, little rides <laughs> on. Sparrows. Uh, yeah, their sparrows oh, on sparrows. Destiny. It's like got 100 videos of that. It's like, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, that's my number three. Number two. That's coming down to it. All right. I just want to point out. So far, all I've talked about is games and the ability to play games. Xbox over there is all about features. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> number two, we already talked about a little bit, but the variety of indie games and the way Sony helps cultivate that. They used to have the Indie Pub Fund, which was like a thing where they reached out to small indie developers and basically said hey we love your game we're going to give you money to help you get this on our console and you know they're just continuing that tradition and it's great so it is crazy i mean like it's hard like this sounds like just sort of a i mean i think surface level not no offense but i think this sounds like something that you could blow off like as your number two but it is it, there's a good reason to place it in number two. Like just listening to the interviews from GDC and the way the developers really just were so over the top talking about Sony. Yeah. Um, it, it was definitely made me like, God damn, I wish Xbox would get, they need to push their way into people loving them and yeah. getting developers to work for them because they're, there's no games without developers. The system can be whatever the fuck it wants. Who get, who gives a rat's ass? But they need to get the developers on board, and they need to start spending their booby money on the developers. <laughs> they really do. Well, and the other thing that sort of sucks for Xbox is, for example, Jonathan Blow. I'm Jonathan Blow. <laughs> That's a good one. That was good. Right? Yeah, it was oh, great. I like the way I did Blow. <laughs> I'm going to do that. He was so Forget upset it. with the way. I'm John. All right. <laughs> No. <laughs> it's getting better. He was so upset. You good? You good? I know. I was thinking. You good? The this is nice. You good? Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> he was so upset with the way that Microsoft treated him. He went straight to Sony. They didn't go to him for the witness, and that is most likely not coming to the Xbox because of the way that they used to handle that shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely admit that Microsoft definitely burned bridges with indie game guys, and I think Phil Spence is doing a tremendous job to build that bridge back up and yep. communicate with them and, and get them on board again, saying, hey, we're no longer the evil Microsoft. We're the fun one. <laughs> yeah, now he lets everyone else jack off on his Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> Another bucket so that, was was your number two. that was his number two. My number two is Xbox Live membership. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. Um, so th- this mm-hmm. month they actually have five uh, <laughs> games. Um, but yet, granted, two of them are Xbox 360 games, um, including Borderlands, Supreme Commander 2, Lords of the Fallen, which is an Xbox One game, Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments, and... Uh, Masters of Shadows, um, but I, I feel like out of all uh, all our friends and stuff, that either myself or Doble downloads like the most um, free games, and because I, if I were to show you my library, it, it's it's pretty big. Granted, I don't have them all stored on there, because uh, I'll if I don't like it, then I'll I'll just you know I'll delete it um, off my hard drive. But it's there for me to download whenever I want again. Um, but so going back to uh, admitting that PlayStation's, you know, it's beating Microsoft pretty well as far as console sales. Um, and Phil Spencer was like, you know, he didn't want to announce how many numbers Microsoft uh, has sold because they're actually looking at 
the Xbox membership and how many active users there are um, at all times. And they're, they said that they have up to 48 million active users um, always using the, the Xbox. Yeah, watching their cable. Would that count? That, that's free. No, that's free. <laughs> Xbox um, Gold. So you have the silver and then in the gold. The silver, you, you pretty much can do anything you want except for play multiplayer games with your friends. So you have to subscribe since they have to you know, maintain servers and all wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't you have to be a gold to watch Netflix? Um, Used to, yes. I think they changed it. Okay. They did, yeah following sony's lead i see (laughs) (laughs) and or phil spence lead i think you could always watch movies on the nintendo wii oh (laughs) (laughs) is there a video service on wii you netflix yeah netflix Netflix is on there i don't use it for that but is hulu not on there i think it is yeah I think it might be. There's a I true games machine. They don't even fucking try to do anything else. You want to hear a fun fact? Sure. The news. Okay. Remember how you could go to the news app on the uh, the the Wii, and it would spin the globe, and you could get your news. Yeah. That's how I learned about Barack Obama. <laughs> all right <laughs> i remember it, it was like late 2007 and it was like trying to pick the democratic like campaign nominee nominee yeah and <laughs> and then it was like here's the nominees and it broke down barack obama i was like that sounds like a swell guy <laughs> <laughs> these are the facts. one thing one thing i forgot to point out for the xbox live is Trump supports uh, it? Yes, five hundred dollars. Hey, we we don't get we don't get five hundred bucks this week. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> fuck you and your but wall. It's the the play anywhere. Um, so, like, if I were to, since I live in Colorado, back in Colorado, if I were to go over <laughs> to any of you guys' place, I can log into Mario my name Mario. and instantly this have access to my games. <laughs> <laughs> and uh um and then whoever um if I, as long as I'm logged in you're you have access to all of the um their games so I don't have to like pack up my Xbox and bring it with me so that's a nice feature that is cool yeah I don't go to friends houses to play there to play my games yeah but I I wish you did we live oh. a block away from each other <laughs> And yeah, you probably can. I don't know. I've never tried. I thought about that. Like, why don't we come over and like I watch you play Axiom Verge, and I can be like, "Hey, you should drill that wall." <laughs> that that would ruin it for you, huh? If I was like, "Drill that wall right there." No, because I gave up on that game. I'm not going to even try to platinum it. <laughs> I beat it. That's all I need. I would like to let you know that I tried to do a speed run, <laughs> and I was so far ahead of the two hour pace. I was forty forty five minutes in. I had beat the three first three bosses or that doesn't I, I, seem the, like you the were the b, ahead of the b the b oh, okay. i have beaten the b okay within 45 minutes damn and then all hell broke loose and i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't figure out what the fuck i was supposed to do and got lost and blew like you're supposed to beat under two hours and then i lost it all see i told you it's just a waste of time <laughs> i do not like speed run trophies yikes Anyway, number one. one. Oh, I don't even have to check my list. He doesn't have to check his list. What are you doing? Well, it's like... You're playing TLC No Scrubs, Mary J. Blige, <laughs> Black Street, Montel Jordan, Whoop, there it is. <laughs> oh, we're back to this song. Wait. This is a lot of build-up. I don't... I don't need another copyright strike. <laughs> I don't get how they could possibly scan the algorithms. Algorithms. Shut up, you're drunk. Number one, <laughs> Naughty Dog games. They cannot be topped. There's no better AAA game than a Naughty Dog game. The Last of Us is perfection. Uncharted 4 coming out in like April. It's going to be even more perfection. 
nothing compares to it on any other console ever. The end of the story. Goodbye. Good night. He just threw the mic across the floor. I won't be speaking for the rest of the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, (laughs) Hedenbot. I feel like uh, Naughty Dog games look great. They look amazing. But I, I have you I mean, played I, them? I yes. I have you played a little bit? Uh huh. Of which one? Um, what's the? You can't even name it. Zombies. The Last of Us. Last of Us. Um, I felt like the you know the mechanics. I'm so picky about me- game mechanics. Yeah, you only I, like first person shooters. Fresh and- no, that's, that's not it. true. Because I play a lot of third person shooters. <laughs> name <laughs> one. Uh, Saints Row. I love Saints Row games. And Grand Theft Auto 5. I didn't like 4. Um, I would not compare the two at all. No, like, Saints Row games, you know, the graphics are horrible, but the humor is so funny. It's so good. But um, the freedom you have in those games, as far as, like, aiming, running, walking, you know, you feel free, whereas... There's some games, kind of like a Tomb Raider, I felt there's still a little clunkiness to the mechanics a little bit. And that's how I felt with The the Last of Us. I respect your opinion, but I also call it <laughs> immediately wrong. Wrong immediately, I mean. Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I know you don't like third person shooters, so don't don't lay this nonsense on me. I, I, I feel like I have actually seen Jamie play third person shooters. He I am definitely against third person shooters, but what was that stupid game you had to buy to pre order to get Halo three or Halo Reach, I can't remember which one. I pre- thought it was pretty thought it was Halo three maybe. But it was like Start with a C, like Crucible, Cruce, Cruce something. Do you remember that? Uh, you played the shit out of it. It was a third-person shooter. I can't remember. Nah, you son of a bitch. Because <laughs> <laughs> usually Halo betas were, I thought it was Gears, but maybe it wasn't. No, nah, there was a Halo... Conquer's Bad Fur nah, Day. It was Halo 3. I know it was Halo 3. You had to buy this stupid you fucking... You have the game. internet. Look it up and I stop talking. Remember. It All doesn't right. really matter. But it was though. a third-person shooter. Stop looking it up. Hey, hold on. Game you but, had... I played, I played Gears of War. That's 2.5. Conker's bad for a Third-person <laughs> shooter. Crack, crack down. down. Crack down. Crack no. down. Oh, yes. Crack down, which is an ex- Xbox exclusive. Should be coming out, I think, this year. You guys keep naming, I like... about crack down. Third-person shooters that are not third-person shooters. third they are. Not, they're not third person games, but Gears of War is the only thing that you've mentioned that I would even equate to the same type of game that Naughty Dog makes. You're talking about Crackdown well, is not. an open world, like jumpy, punchy, yes. shooty business that is not a, a sandbox. Where right. Naughty Dog games aren't sandbox. No, Naughty they're, Dog game, games they're scripted. mechanics aside are story driven, which mm, right. is amazing, character driven, which is great. But I do think the mechanics are the best of any third-person shooter that you can find. Not like open-world, jumpy-shooty bullshit. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's a, a preference thing. Because like, I, I still love... Yeah, like, I know you uh, like first-person shooters. Skyrim. I, mean, I love Skyrim. I played that in both that, views. That is... First-person and third-person. <laughs> No, Jamie, no. <laughs> well, here we go. Now we're finally that getting is, into the... <laughs> that is absolutely a first-person shooter. You popped into third-person to look around for a bit. You didn't fucking play it that way, and I guarantee you, God damn it. No, it depends if I was using sword or a uh, bow and arrow. It's I not a third-person shooter, though. Third-person. Is Zelda a third-person shooter? No, it's a. there's a sword. There's no shooting. There's no cover mechanics. But you're seeing a little But it's third-person. That's third-person. I'm talking about third-person shooters. He uses a bow and arrow. And it goes to the first person for it, I think. Yeah, it does go into first person. I think it goes into first person fishing, too. But yes, if you're talking about <laughs> non sandbox third person shooters, Gears of War would probably be the only one that I can think of. Um, I guess, I don't know if, no, I guess Borderlands, that was first person, but 
But yeah. All right. My number one. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So my number one, and the reason why I, I told Michael that I don't personally own any PlayStations. Oh, Snapple. Is the you Xbox say. game controller. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's is by far the best game controller ergonomically by far the best and to top themselves they came out with the elite xbox game controller where you have pads that are underneath your controller so your thumbs um, don't have to leave to press you know x y a b or you know in playstation's case square circle triangle Oof, there's star. A big, that is a huge <laughs> negative that's just because you're not used to it I, yeah. It doesn't make any fucking. I even. I used. To, it makes total sense. I used You're to just play the stupid. No, no, fuck that. But, I used to play the X or the the PlayStation One. I was still just like, what the fuck is? Can you not put A B one X Y or? It's because one, two, three, you're four? mentally handicapped. It's not that hard. It's four fucking symbols. <laughs> you can figure it out. If, <laughs> if you were trying to tell a, anybody, just like, hey, all right, I would like here. Here is a random assortment of four objects put them in order and you give them why does it need to be in order they're not lined up in order what the fuck is there's, the point of that you stupid a, moron is this there is a cycle to let me know where my thumb is going just like typing how how is a b x y a cycle it goes a b x y yeah like first is a b they, on the bottom right corner, that doesn't right. make any sense to <laughs> but, a, a new person to game consoles and controllers. That <laughs> goes against the flow of reading, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> say, say ABX or you say circle, square, triangle. This is the thing. Circle, circle square, triangle. There's Nobody's no, saying there's no it. Anything. It's, you see it on screen. Wait, well, hold on, I, hold on. What, at, sir, what is it? Circles? It's no, see, going, that's not, going okay. clockwise from the top. It's triangle, circle, X, square. See, why didn't they do line, <laughs> like two lines, triangle, <laughs> square, po- uh, pentagon, or polygon? I'd like it, So it would be like a two-sided, three-sided, four-sided, five-sided, because then I could Because that doesn't make any sense. Maybe that made sense when you were doing platformers in I can't fucking out. 30 years ago. Yeah, but like when someone says press the b button i can theoretically figure it out in my head where b button is when they say x i'm like oh that could be any one of these fucking buttons i don't know which button that is you cannot theoretically figure it out where where a b x y is because then otherwise a b would be on top i I bet it should go a b on top left x y on bottom but it's not it would there's no logical sense to it you're just used to the a b x y well let's take someone who doesn't know games at all deb Get her to hold a controller, and she's not allowed to look at it, and tell her, no, press that's the B not button. Fair. You play retro games with her all the time. This is already <laughs> a fucked up situation. <laughs> no. It holds some validity. It holds zero validity, and you're fucking stupid if you can't figure it out. I'm sorry, Deb, you're stupid. <laughs> to Michael. Oh, no, I'm stupid, huh? Yeah, you are. Well, I can't. I can't figure out where. I know. I think the X is the one at the bottom because they tell me to press that the most. Which Correct. is like the A button. Sure. I don't. You know what else is weird? Is that it, it holds no credence whatsoever to the <laughs> to the Super Nintendo controller. I'm looking at it right now. What the Xbox there, one? There is. Well, yeah, the Xbox has the X, Y, A, and B buttons, right? But it's opposite. Yeah, from Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo. Because Nintendo fucked. Why did they switch the A and the B? Ever starting from the original Nintendo. Oh, but somehow you were able to figure because out they the change from, from right to left. Xbox. Yeah. Oh, there is a valid point right there. Pete just said it. Because they read from right to left. Yeah, and so maybe when they were making the PlayStation, they are like, maybe we should just use your universal symbols instead of fucking changing and flipping the letters. Why didn't they do numbers? Why would that make any more sense? Because I can count one, two, three, four like a fucking clock. Why do you need to know which order they are, though? What because is the I point of that? No. When it says to hit square, you fucking hit square. Because I have to look down at the controller. No, you don't. You just fucking play a game for twenty minutes Ooh, and you start to understand. What if they use the arrows, like the um, like the N sixty four? The N sixty four. I never had any yeah. problems. The ocarina, uh, ocarina of time when it had the music and it had the little symbols. Never had any problems. Never because it was arrows. You can't argue with that. I mean, 
I've already argued all this, and it's the stupidest yeah. argument I've ever had. Fine. We both agree <laughs> that the Nintendo 64 is the best controller. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did have those bumpers. Love those mm-hmm. bumpers. But, and then uh, when you played Star Fox with your hand underneath the center area, you'd actually get a fucking bloody knuckle. <laughs> Good controller. But the, it was weird because like, the Nintendo 64 controller, like you end up never using the left side of the controller. No, never. <laughs> there was no games yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. So All right, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, so uh, for the Elite controller, um, all the parts are made from steel. So there is, well, I've never seen, and they claim that there's no wear and tear. I've definitely had some wear and tear as far as, like, little plastic dust around the sticks. Mm. Never broken a, a controller as far as, you know, snapping a stick or not. I've seen some pictures of PlayStation 4, but I'll leave that alone. What? He snapped his stick. <laughs> okay. uh, he snapped his stick. <laughs> Snap. <it. laughs> yeah. So, in, in uh, conclusion, since he had the intro. Oh, oh yeah. Man. You don't get your uh, final words. Oh, this is <laughs> stupid. I don't need it, though. I feel like I. If... He threw down the gauntlet with Naughty Dog. Not a doubt. If you've ever played a Naughty Dog game, that is reason enough. I, I have I have Uncharted I 1, 2, and 3 that. downstairs. I haven't even downloaded them. I don't even care. I, I admit so I just because you're them. stupid, and we've already figured that because out. Because it's going to have too many instructions of telling me to press the O button. And then I'm like, oh, I guess it's the circle button. I can't even. I thought I was going to argue with Jamie tonight, <laughs> I know. but instead you're the fucking dumbass that I have to argue with. I don't like. I've never liked the stupid symbols. See, my my problem was wasn't really with the buttons. It was with the thumbsticks because I I feel like my thumbs have to go down lower. I I think the PlayStation Four controller is a lot better in adjusting that, but it still doesn't feel ergonomic to me. Question for you, Jamie. Yes. The Elite controller. Can you swap out where the D-pad and the joystick is? Uh, you cannot. Okay, because, like, for me, I prefer the PlayStation controller for indie games, right? Because you're using the right. D-pad more. But then right. for, like, AAA stuff, I will agree. I think I prefer the Xbox controller because my thumb doesn't have to reach so far. I was playing mm-hmm. Unravel. And I could only use the thumbstick to move the little yarny motherfucker. And my I have, like, terrible hands because I animate all fucking day. And it, my hands, like, killed me playing that game because you're always moving to the right. And I had to press down the whole time, and it hurt after a while. Hey, sorry, your hands hurt on the PlayStation. Yeah. When I have to use the analog stick on a side-scroller. See, I, I actually use the D-pad on the Xbox when I'm doing side-scrollers. Like for Ori. <laughs> <laughs> and with the Elite, yeah. you can swap out um, the different D-pads, and all the swap outs, like the stick and stuff, are magnetic, and they they're really strong. But so, like for racing games, for the thumb, thumbstick, I use what I call the mushroom head. It's like it's, it's like my dick. Know, it looks like a <laughs> it looks like a mushroom head. <laughs> but uh, and then so for first person shooters, I switch it out for a more like flatter stick. Jeff stick. More more grip, <laughs> but that controller is awesome and it's, it's, it's worth a good three and a half 150 inches. if you can uh, afford it. And you can use it on your PC if you want. Cool. And that I think that's why uh, Oculus Rift chose the Xbox controller. It'd be interesting. What are there? There's more. Uh, USB conversions for to use the Xbox controller on the PlayStation than the other way around, right? Uh, that's because the PlayStation 3 controller, I think, didn't work on PCs for a while. And Xbox 360 were the only ones that did. Ah. Uh, yeah. You give me a look like that's some sort of point? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. But in conclusion, I pointed out all features like Michael said I did. Because, I f- I f- you know, he was talking about games, which both are gaming consoles. They both have exclusive. And as far as exclusive, they over time they end up, you know, on both platforms. Except for, you know, first-party games. 
And <laughs> so I feel like Xbox has a lot of features. It's great at a lot of entertaining things you can uh, access as far as television, mm-hmm. good old Netflix and and uh, HBO. To, wow, HBO. Twitch. Those things easy are to also switch on in and out of your your games and television, and that that's that's what they wanted. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad they focused on not acquiring good games. <laughs> I feel like that was a fair, <laughs> a very fair analysis of six points that both systems have very valid reasons to enter your home. Now, after our argument, tell us who wins. Uh, as of right now, I don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> What, what the power of a PlayStation with an Xbox controller? You can buy those; those exist. And you, but would the screen right. convert to say, "I oh can press the B button"? <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason I drink. <laughs> uh, seriously, I'm playing Axiom Version. It's like press the X button. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Shut up! You Plus beat the, the game. It, you can't be that <laughs> fucking. I know, but th- the reason why VR is so cool is because you don't have to l- look down at your controller. Like you're wearing this huge head mask. No, when, you're still gonna have to use the controller. It. That's it. I found out the reason why PlayStation's gonna suck on oh. on uh, whatever project. It's is, called PlayStation Morph- VR. PlayStation yeah. VR. Shouldn't it have a name better than that? It used to be Project to be Morpheus. Morpheus. So Project Morpheus is going to bomb Morpheus. because you're going to be sitting there playing the game and it's going to tell you to press the X, bot, X button and you're going to have to lift up your stupid <laughs> goggle to look down at your controller and be like, which one's the X button? That's going to kill the system. <laughs> you are just... The- I, think, I think in general... <laughs> uh, People who have played the X, uh, the uh, the PlayStation long enough know that know how, know where the buttons are. Someone who's diving in, you know, six hundred deep on a on a virtual reality console, are they probably know the controller of the system? I don't like that point. It's very true. <laughs> no, retract that part. Can we play it in reverse? <laughs> I didn't think that'd fucking work. <laughs> it's retarded that that worked. <laughs> that is stupid. Why did that work? Because you're stupid. <laughs> Macintosh, it can do anything. <laughs> it can reverse farts. <laughs> oh, it reversed the fart. That's good. But I want to next uh, podcast. Sorry, next podcast uh, will be. Top six PC versus Mac. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who's gonna take Mac? <laughs> I don't know. My wife made not me buy I. this, so it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, Drew likes Macs. Yeah, he Mac does. Computers. But I wanted to say, if you go to Xbox um, or go to YouTube and look up Xbox One exclusive 2016, there's a lot of games in there to check out. Cool. Any final words on that, Michael? This is our longest podcast. Really? Ow. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Setting. <laughs> um, you mean like on this subject or just in yeah, general? Yeah, you got a final like little like, hey, you can go to PlayStation Plus VR and check out whatever <laughs> games are coming in the fall. <laughs> no. Just, no, whatever. <laughs> you remember those games um, that you'd play that it would teach you to type? Like, you would put the cloth over yeah. your hand, and then you would have to type? Yeah. Do they have anything like that for the PlayStation controller? It's called just <laughs> playing games. It's really not that hard to figure out. <laughs> right. We've found a button on me, and we're just pressing it, aren't we? <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> uh I finally found it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We're going to wrap this puppy up, right? Sure. I got nothing else. There was no other topics we had this week. Oh, there was Utopia. What would you guys think? (laughs) (laughs) Didn't see it. Okay, Jamie didn't see it. I loved it. You loved it? So did I. They loved it. I loved it. We are three veterans of the animation industry that don't give a fuck about what we see in terms of the animation. We're only going to talk about video games. 
<laughs> Zootopia. Well, that was really fantastic. We don't need to say anything else. They know it. Whatever. Yeah, go see it. It's making haven't. all the money. We don't need to fucking talk about it. Yeah, no. I mean, they talking animals doing cool shit. People should give as much good. money as possible instead of... All right, we're not going to stop there. <laughs> I'm going to catch myself before I say something bad. Good call. All right. This has been another episode of Just a Few Warm Minutes podcast where three veterans of the animation and video game industry talk about exactly that. Animation and video games and complaining about controller layout. <laughs> I am Jeff Gabor. Alongside me is Michael Berardini. In Boston, Rhode Island is Michael... Nope. Beep again. <laughs> <laughs> and way out in sunny Colorado is Jamie Geiger. Thank you so much for joining us, Jamie. No problem. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, good job. Yay. <laughs> uh, I like this episode. It hey, was Jeff. Fun. Yeah. Press X to fuck off. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Wait. You fucked it up. Wait. You gotta play the part again now. Damn it. It's oh. not playing. You fu- <laughs> Oh, it doesn't work See, anymore. You had only worked that one time. Uh, How did you do it? I that don't one know. Time? Magic. It's everything's <laughs> fucked up. Don't ruin the recording. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, see if you just hit it. If you tap it once, it does it nice and slow. <laughs> that he sounds like it's sucking in, right? <laughs> this has been episode Jesus eight. Christ. Please, I don't think anybody listened to us. Probably because we should probably mention it at the head of the podcast. <laughs> We're <laughs> so good at this. <laughs> Go to YouTube and hit subscribe so we can get our URL of actual our podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. Please. I don't even. It, we're we, like we're YouTube dot com slash blah, 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 blah. Yeah, once we get to hundred, you can unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that works, but let's just get to hundred. I bet it works. I don't know. Why wouldn't it work? I don't know. Of course, it works. It works. It makes sense. Like A B X Y. Mm. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.